My name is Julian DeLeon. I'm a very gifted, slightly undersized receiver. I'm great getting in and out of my cuts and making plays after the catch. I'm a pretty rare recruit being that I'm a Hispanic receiver coming out of Miles City, Montana. I come from a family with a really rich history in the sport of soccer, but my talents on the football field just couldn't be ignored. It's my senior year here at Miles City High, and I'm not only aiming to be the number one Hispanic recruit, but to be the first ever Hispanic number one recruit in the country ever. It's week nine of my senior season, and I've been balling out so far, but these last couple of games before the playoffs are easily the most important. First and 10, three minutes left in the first quarter. I make a great catch across the middle. I get tackled, but after I secure the first down. First and 10, this corner's playing off. I run a comeback and I make a pretty good catch for eight yards. Second and four, I come off the line. I sell this slant. I plant my foot, get open. I make a nasty move after the catch, then step out of bounds. Under 20 seconds left here in the first quarter, I run this comeback for a quick reception in a short game. Key third and goal situation. I come off the line selling a drag, but I break off back into my route and I make an easy catch for a touchdown. First and 10, I win at the line against this DB. I run this comeback route for a really good reception. First and 10, I'm running one of my favorite routes. This linebacker got hands on me halfway through, but I did a great job getting open, securing a 13-yard reception. Third and a very long 17, this DB got hands on me to slow up my release. I got open, but I got tackled just three yards short of the first down. We decided to go for it on fourth down. The safety fell asleep, and that freed me up for my second touchdown of the game. I'm balling out. Let's go. First and 10, I went here at the line against this DB. I made a great catch, and I went on to make an amazing 66-yard reception, bro. I'm going crazy right now. Four and a half minutes left here in the third quarter. I absolutely destroyed this DB at the line. By the time he recovers, I'm already in the end zone for touchdown number three. First and 10, the middle of the field is extremely crowded, so I stop in the beginning of my route. I sit down and make this catch. My quarterback, Steve Merkel, let me know I need to run this route a little bit shorter due to the way the DBs are lined up. That's exactly what I did, and we secured the first down. First and 10, I'm on a nice little comeback route. I tried to make a move after the catch, but I just get tackled for the first down. After this game, I go from a three to a four-star recruit, and overall, I just balled out today. A few days later, my coach hit me up, and he let me know that Ohio State, Oklahoma, and Baylor all offer me scholarships. And I have newfound interest from Notre Dame, Texas A&M, and Oregon. Going into our next game, I open up on first and 10 with a quick little comeback route for a six yard reception. Second and four, I do a great job selling this route. I come back across the middle for a great catch, securing the first down. Third and 10, I win here at the line against this DB, but Steve Merkel did a terrible job. He didn't lead this ball at all. It's a great reception, but this could have easily been a touchdown. But on the very next play, Steve Merkel hits me in the end zone and I score touchdown number one of the day. First and 10, I noticed this DB dropping back into his zone pretty heavy, so I shorten up my route for a quick four yard reception. And here on fourth and one, me and this DB fight all the way through this route. I go up top, make a crazy catch, break a tackle, and I walk in for an insane touchdown. My teammates hype me up, but I'm just standing to the crowd knowing I'm him. First and 10, I do an amazing job selling this route. I get wide open. Merkel hits me, and I get freaky after the catch for a huge game. Steve Merkel let me know to run the comeback and not to go if they sit off like this, so that's exactly what I did, and I pick up a nice game. This defense is solely focused on not letting us get into the end zone before the half, and they continue to leave open this comeback route. Second and 10 here, I fire off the line. I get this DB to open up his hips and I make a great catch for a 19 yard reception. And here on first and 10, this DB makes a crucial mistake not getting a jam at the line and I walk in for another tug. A minute left here in the third quarter, I had a comeback route. This safety doesn't have a clue, so I had to extend my route into the end zone. I go crazy today with four touchdowns, bro, and I get my fifth star. And after just recently getting attention from Oregon, they already offered me a scholarship. A few schools hit me up, let me know they were interested in me at receiver, Washington State, Washington, and Stanford. We're playing against 0-10 Helena today, one of the worst teams in the state of Montana. I know I'm about to ball out today. And here on second and 10, I get open. I tried making a move after the catch, but I get tripped up and I land out of bounds. Down here in the red zone, first and goal, I went here at the line against this DB and Steve Merkel puts this ball into a very tight window for my first touchdown. First and 10, this DB got a decent little jam on me, so I cut my route a little short and I secured the first down. Coach been on my head about freestyling my own routes, but I did it again here and I put myself in the blender with all these spins after the catch. But here on third and 10, I do a great job running my route. I get this DB to open up his hips inside and Steve Merkel throws a great ball and I walk in for another touchdown. 21 point lead here in the first half. We're back into the red zone. I fight at the line with this DB. I didn't win the release, but I get open for another touchdown. I'm playing out of my mind right now. First and 10, I come off the line trying to get this corner to bite on this route on the outside. Steve Merkel threw this ball a little early, but I turned this into a huge game. First and 10, Steve Merkel throws a good sideline ball, but I make an even better sideline toe 
tap and catch. Marcus sees something in his defense, so he signaled me to run the exact same route again, and it works out in our favor. Under a minute left here in the first half, I win at the line with this DB. I get open across the middle, and Merka delivers a great ball for a decent game. To kick off the second half, I shred this DB at the line. I make a really good catch for a nine yard reception. Second and 10, I run my money route to perfection. Merka definitely could have threw a better ball than this, though. I don't know what Merka sees in this defense, but he signals me to run this route again, and I make one of my greatest catches this season for another touchdown. I noticed this DB is sitting off pretty heavy, so I ran this out route trying to stay in bounds, but I get tackled on the spot anyway. Less than 10 seconds left here in the third quarter. This DB is terrified, and he plays the worst coverage possible, and I walk in for TD number five. I walk out of here as player of the game. This was easily my best game of the season. And just like that, I receive another big-time scholarship from Stanford. Out of these three schools that I could add to my recruitment board, of course I'm going to add Bama. I'm currently ranked number 61 of the ESPN Top 150. I'm definitely going to increase my rank throughout the playoffs. It is time for the playoffs, and we match up against a great 9-2 and two Billings team, but I open up this game with a great catch across the middle. Second and six, I'm open on this comeback route, and I make a great catch for the first down. We take a big risk not kicking the field goal here on fourth and three. I run a great route, and we get an even bigger reward with this touchdown. First and 10, I avoid a heavy jam from this corner. Steve Merker throws this ball a little off the mark, but I go get it to secure up a 17-yard reception. Working our way up the field, I run a good comeback route, and I make this grab for an 11-yard reception. Steve Merker signaled me to run the comeback again, and I toss this DB after the catch. This is easily my least favorite route, so I added a little flavor to it for a bigger game. But I keep it very simple here. I sell this route on the inside, and I turn it back upfield for my second touchdown of the day. I want to do everything I can to help my team win our first playoff game, so I take this punt back for 38 yards, giving our offense great field position. Now with the game being tied 14-14, to I run this route across the middle, and I get blasted after the catch. A very gussy 4th and 2 situation here in the third quarter. After the catch, I show off my grown man strength. Second and 10 here, I run a comeback route. Steve Merker does a great job being patient, waiting for this linebacker to commit to the flat. Second and 10 here, I run this slant. This DB must have thought he was KJ Franks the way he dove out for this ball. First and 10, this corner got a great jam on me at the line. Steve Merker still decided to set me up with this safety anyway. Second and 10, I do an amazing job selling this route on the inside. I made this DB look silly after the catch. Working our way up the field, I continue to eat this defense up with these comeback routes. Coach tells me he's about to pull the starters after this play, so I had to make it count and I make another great reception. I ball out here in the first round of the playoffs with 18 catches, 208 yards, and two touchdowns. Saturday morning, Nick Saban called the house and he offered me a scholarship. I received new interest from Wisconsin and West Virginia and WSU continues to recruit me. Round two of the playoffs against Lewistown and I secure a first down on the first play of the game. Second down here, two minutes left here in the first quarter. I run this out route. I barely get a foot in, but I do secure the catch. Second and four here, I destroy this linebacker. I run across the middle and I make a catch for a great 10-yard reception. And here on first down, I tried hitting this DB with a little double move. He didn't bite on it, but I do make a great catch for a 26-yard reception. Down here in the red zone, I obliterate this DB at the line for an easy touchdown, my first of the game. First and 10, I knew I was going to be wide open on this route, and I make the catch for a really nice game. And here, this DB is playing so far off, it would be a crime not to cut this route short. So that's exactly what I did to secure this first down. Just over four minutes left here in the half, I do a great job selling this route on the inside. I break off back into my route, and I make a great catch for a big game. First and goal, this DB tried jamming me at the line. I shred him, get open, and I stumble out of bounds for my second touchdown of the game. Third and two, I sell this route on the inside. This linebacker second guessed himself, so I got open for the first down. Coach gave me the go ahead to cut certain routes short when they play certain coverages, and that's exactly what I did here for a nice game. Second down here, this DB tried getting physical with me at the line. I come across the middle, I make a nice catch for 11 yards. We're making our way down the field, 32 seconds left in this half, and I make a pretty decent sideline catch to try to move the chains and stop the clock. Third and five, this DB did didn't get a jam and that was a big mistake. I make a really nice catch on the sideline, moving the chains and stopping the clock once again. Kicking off the second half here, I bend this go route in the inside a little bit and I make a pretty nice catch in traffic. This is easily the most physical play of the game. I get touched at the line and I get rocked after the catch. I let Merkin know I wasn't feeling the comeback route here, so I round off this out route a little bit and it worked out in our favor. Now with a 26 to seven lead here, I run this comeback route. I tried to make a move after the catch, but I just secured the first down here. Third and two, I have a simple slant route. I come across the middle make this catch and I fight hard to secure some extra yardage. I balled out here in the second round of the playoffs. 22 catches, 267 yards, and three touchdowns. And the offers just keep on coming after Wisconsin offers me a scholarship after the game. After missing the third round of the playoffs due to a neck injury, I have to come in here and ball out today in the state championship game. With the safety sitting so high and with this corner pressing me, Steve Merger signaled me to run a go route. That's exactly what I did and I walk in for touchdown number one of the game. Here on second down, I lose at the line against this DB, but I break off and I make this catch to secure the first down.
down. Second down here, I'm wide open on this comeback route. I break this tackle. This would have been a huge play if I didn't step out of bounds here. A key third and six situation, I run one of my favorite routes. Steve Merker throws this ball well behind me, but I make a nasty one-handed catch. Second down here, I run a nice route across the middle, and I get real freaky after the catch. Under two minutes left here in the first half, I do a great job selling this route on the inside, and I get wide open for my second touchdown. This DB actually had good coverage on this play, but he never turned around for the ball, and Steve Merker puts it on the money. Second and 10 here, I lose at the line against this DB, and Steve Merker throws this ball into double coverage, and this is one of the worst picks I've ever seen. I didn't even call for the ball. Second down here, I have a simple out route. I do a great job creating separation at the end of this route, and I make a pretty decent catch. We have no business being on the field here on fourth and two, but I get freaky after the catch. This could have definitely went for six. Now with a 28 to seven lead here, first and 10, I run this out route. Call me Tony Toe Tap. I'm a dog with these sideline catches. And here on second and 10, I run this route again. These safeties and DBs, they just cannot keep up with me on this route. A very long third and 16, I destroyed this corner at the line. If without this safety, this would have easily been another touchdown for me. And speaking of touchdown here on second and goal, I get a diving catch across the middle. This was nasty. We get a blowout win here in the Montana State Championship game, and we complete our undefeated season. And I have another stellar game here with 17 catches, 212 yards, and three touchdowns. And them Longhorns out of the Big 12, they offer me a scholarship. And I received some of my final entries from Georgia, Clemson, and Notre Dame. Next week, I have to make the biggest decision of my life. What school do I go to? I have offers from just about every single big time power five school in the nation. Coming from a small town in Montana, I can only dream of opportunities like this. And if need be, I can walk on to any school in the country. This is a very difficult decision to make. Where should I go? This is easily the toughest decision I'll ever make in my life. After a ton of visits, talks with coaches, my family, and friends, I've decided to go ball out at the University of Michigan. Go Blue. I'm looking really good coming in as a freshman. Everybody thinks I'll have a huge impact on the team's success. Currently, I'm wide receiver number two in the depth chart. But as the season go on, I'll have opportunities to move up and become a leader of this team. I opened up my first practice here at Michigan with a nasty play. I went crazy after the catch. This could have easily went for six. About halfway through practice, I ran my route, caught this ball in traffic. I got hit hard, but I held on to the ball. A few plays later, I caught this ball between the corner and the safety for a nice game. But soon after that, my teammates reminded me that my slight 175-pound frame might be a problem in the Big Ten. Not too many plays left in this practice, but I cap it all off with a decent catch for a nice game. I did all right my first practice. Coach let me know if I keep working hard, I'll be able to challenge for the number one receiver spot soon. Opening kickoff, I finesse my way to the outside and I take off for a decent 34-yard return. Our first offensive possession of the game, quarterback Cave McNam fumbles and he turns the ball over. Second and 10, I'm wide open coming across the middle of the field. He had plenty of time to get me this ball, but Cade threw the ball out of bounds anyway. On the very next play, third and 10, Cade has me wide open, and he has no pressure in the pocket and under through this ball. I'm starting to show my frustration. Under two minutes left here in the first quarter, I know I have to make something happen here in the kickoff game. I'm making guys miss. I'm going crazy. And the frustration continues to grow on my part. I'm wide open. Cade has a clean pocket, and he throws this ball out of bounds. Early here in the second quarter, first and 10, Cade has a clean pocket once again. I'm I'm wide open and he still doesn't hit me and he takes a sack. But here on third and eight, once again, K with a clean pocket, he finally hits me wide open across the middle. Third and inches, I went here to line against this corner. K slightly under through this ball, but I still made the catch. We're finally starting to get a rhythm. And here on first and 10, McNam hits me on this out route for a nice nine yard reception. Second and three here, I know I call for this ball, but K set me up with this safety. I get rocked. Third and 10, this is easily my best play of the game. I go up top and I catch this ball through contact and I almost took this to the crib. That's going going crazy. And we cap off this drive taking the lead with K. McNam hit my teammate in the end zone for a touchdown. We back out here returning these kicks. I finesse my way to the outside and we get a nice 30 yard return. We get a hard fought dub at home against Central Michigan 24 to 17. Not a bad first game, but K. McNam is going to have to start using his eyes when I'm wide open or we going to have a problem. Home game against our rival Notre Dame and we open up with a nice spin move after the catch for a decent game. Getting active in the return game early today, I take off. I finesse my way to the outside for a really nice 29 yard return. After the return, I sat out for one play and Kate McNam threw a pick and just like that, we're down 20 to seven. I went at the line against this corner and I come across on this slant and I catch my first college touchdown. First and 10, there's no jam at the line. Kyle Hamilton took a terrible angle at the ball and I made this catch for a nice 25 yard reception. Second and five, I run a nice little curl right. I make this catch for the first down. The big hit didn't phase me and I'm fired up. Second and one here, I'm not open at all. If I didn't make this adjustment, 
K. McNam would have threw another pick. Now we're here in overtime, third and nine. I lose at the line against this corner, but I still make a great catch. K. is feeding me today. But just when we started to make progress, our running back fumbled the ball and Notre Dame recovers. They went down and scored. We take a heartbreaking loss at home against our rival Notre Dame. After stepping up and making plays in such a big game, coach allowed me to challenge for the number one receiver spot. And here my teammate didn't get a jam. That's a huge mistake. I get open on this route and I make a great catch before getting hit out of bounds. Just a few reps left here in this practice. I make a nice catch and I break a tackle while I'm going out of bounds. I get open here on this play coming across the middle, but it wasn't the big play that I needed to wow my coaches. I had a decent practice, but I just didn't perform well enough to take over that receiver one spot, so we remain receiver number two. Our third straight home game this week, we got Akron, and on the opening kickoff, bro, I'm getting freaky, and I take off for a really decent return. I sat out for one play, offense turned over the ball, so I'm right back on the kick return, and I take off for another great 34-yard return. Third and one, we get our first action here on the offensive side of the ball, and I make a great catch across the middle for a first down. First and 10, I do a great job selling this route to the outside a little bit. K hits me in stride for a nice 27-yard reception. Second and 10, we're slowly but surely marching down the field. My boy K hits me in the flats, and I make a decent five-yard reception. Second and 12 here, my boy K has a clean pocket, and he refuses to hit me wide open across the middle, and he takes a very terrible sack. But here he bounces back on first and 10. He hits me on the sideline for a nice little toe tap. Under a minute left in the first half, I make a nice catch for 11 yards, but I definitely need to get out of bounds. K McNam went down earlier in the third quarter with an injury. Our backup comes in, and he walks into the end zone for a touchdown. Under five minutes left in the fourth quarter, I get hit on this kick return and I come off the field limping in excruciating pain. It's doubtful that I'll return for the rest of this game. Even though I went down with an injury, my guy still came through and got the dub and we hand Akron their first L of the season. Before our game against Charlotte, coach gave me one more opportunity for a shot at the number one receiver spot. I'm having one of my best practices I've had all season, but I think it's really my leadership and determination is winning my coaches and teammates over. After practice, coach lets me know I'm now the number one receiver. It's time to ball out and make De Leon a household name. To open up this game, K does what K does, and he throws a pick straight to the defense. You know what? I got an answer for that. I'm going to bust one out to the outside on the return. I'm going to take off, and I'm going to hurt a lot of bounds for a really nice 40-yard return. Third and nine, I got this slant coming across the middle. I make the catch, but I'm one yard short of the first down. Third down here, this cornerback is impressing me, and that's a huge mistake. I make a nice sideline catch for the first down. Under two minutes left here in the first quarter, I run this curl. I got hit hard, but I don't feel no pain. Let's go. In the kick off the second quarter, the pocket collapsed around Cade, and he takes a terrible negative five-yard sack. Second and two, I come across the middle on this slant. I make a nice catch in traffic for the first down. We need a big play before we go into the half. I make a catch across the middle, and I show why I'm wide receiver number one, and I put us in great field position to go in and score. And who better to go and get us one other than your boy JD? This touchdown right here put us within five. Open up the second half by setting the tone. I take off for a nasty 74-yard kickoff return. I came to ball and not to play today. Let's go. I'm going to have to work on my conditioning. After such a big return, I sat out the entire possession, but my guys went down and we take the lead here in the third quarter. Now with a 10-point lead, I think it's inevitable that Cade is going to do what Cade does, and he throws a pick straight to this corner, bro. What is he doing? Now with only a three-point lead here in the fourth quarter, I turn what should have been a dead play from the beginning to a really nice game. Third and seven here, I extend this curl just a little bit to secure this first down, but I got hit hard. Now we're here in overtime and we need to score. Third and goal and Cade throws the most oblivious pick I've ever seen in my life. Our defense gave up 41 points to an unranked Charlotte team. I don't know how we bounce back after such an embarrassing L like this. We're having a terrible start to the season right now being 2-2, two and two, but I'm going to continue to show up for my teammates and make big plays. Third and goal, I run a nice route to the outside and we take an early 14-7 lead against Minnesota. Third and three, I come across the middle. K leads me out of traffic and I secure the first down. First and 10, I look this DB off to the inside. I'm wide open and somehow K still underthrows his ball. Third and when I get a step on this DB, K underthrows this ball and Minnesota comes away with the pick. He is way too inconsistent to be my QB. The very first possession of the second half, K McNam strikes again. He throws another interception. A little over five minutes left here in the third. I make a nice grab across the middle and I secure the first down. First and 10, I got a curl route. I toss off this defender after the catch and I take off. I get out of bounds for a nice 31 yard reception. We run a screen play on third and 15. I'm starting to question the coaching and the quarterback play. Under 30 seconds left, K surprisingly hits me wide open. I'm so excited, I spin out of bounds. First and 10, I got a go route. K is not patient in the pocket, and he bails out just a little too soon, and he missed me wide open. The very last play of regulation, K has one job. That's put the ball in the end zone and give us a chance to score, and he just doesn't have the arm talent. A very important third and eight situation. I try to get open on this route. K severely 
underthrows this ball and now it's fourth and eight. Third and two, I win at the line against this DB and to say the least, K McNam strikes again. But luckily here on fourth and two, my teammate got open, K hits him for a touchdown. Now here in double overtime, K hits me in stride for a nice 11 yard play. And here on second and one, running back CJ Stokes gets a walk-in touchdown to seal the game here in double overtime against Minnesota. A win like this at home could turn our entire season around and give us some positive momentum. But I'm not sure if I'll be here long enough to see it. I have to transfer from Michigan after this season. I love the way this blue and gold looks on me, but the poor quarterback play, bad play call, and just overall how terrible the team is playing, I gotta get up out of here. We started this season ranked within the top 20 teams in the nation. We're only halfway through and we're not even ranked anymore. The only good thing to come up this season so far is I have the most kick return yards in the country, and I'm top 10 for the Jet Award. We're ranked dead last in our division, even Purdue is having a better season than us right now. We're second to last in the entire Big Ten Conference. The only team playing worse than us right now is Minnesota. This is an absolute embarrassment. And to make matters 10 times worse, my starting quarterback, K. McTrash, has more interceptions than touchdowns. But I'm going to be honest, I can't put all the blame on Cade. Even though he's playing horrible, our offensive line is playing even worse. He's been sacked 24 times, only half halfway through the season. The fact that I'm ranked 22nd in the country in receiving yards with the poor quarterback play, bro, I know for a fact if we had a good quarterback, I would be at least top three. But I have to finish out my freshman season strong, continue to build up my resume so when I hit the transfer portal, I can go play for a better school. Over the next six games, I set some goals for myself. Crack a thousand yards, score a few more touchdowns, and overall just solidify myself to be one of the best receivers in the country. Undefeated Penn State on the road and this stadium is packed. The lights are bright tonight. Third down, I run a quick route across the middle. I secure the first down and a little more. Under three minutes left here in the first half and K McTraz misses me wide open up the field. First and 10, K gives this DB the easiest pick of his life. Even though I called for the ball, all he had to do was lead me towards the sideline. Under a minute left here in the first half, I make a decent grab across the middle for a nice nine yards. First and 10, K throws another bad ball in the coverage and I come down with a nasty ankle injury. I make my return back here in the third quarter and I immediately come in and score a touchdown. Just over two and a half minutes left in the third quarter, I cook this DB and Cade throws a pass that only Cade is capable of throwing. Second and 10, I fry this DB again and I have to do a full 180 to catch this terrible pass. First and 10, all Cade has to do is lead me towards the sideline like we practice all week and he does a complete opposite and throws a pick. Under two minutes left here in the fourth, I get some great blocking on this quick screen and I take it for a decent seven yards. But we take yet another L. Penn State went down and kicked the field goal to take the dub. We're back at home against Indiana and K misses me wide. I'm staring at him in his soul and he doesn't throw me this ball. Not even halftime, we're down 24 to nothing. I gotta get involved in a return game and I finesse my way up the field for 32 yards. Third and 10, we trying to march our way down to kind of ease some of this embarrassment. I make a nice catch for a first down. Second and 13, I'm running a nice little crispy route for a 180 toe tapper, nothing crazy. Second and five, this is a horribly thrown ball, but it's a smart pass. If it was thrown any better, this could have been a pick. Now down 11 points here on third down, K actually throws a decent ball and we're pushing our way up the field. But even with all the effort we put in late in this game, we still take the L here at home against Indiana. We kick off this game against Michigan State the only way we know how with K McTrash throwing a pick. Second and 13, I make this catch. I make a guy missing space and I get a little bump out of bounds. First and 10, I don't know what it is, but the only time Cade throws a good ball is when I have an opportunity to get lit up by a safety. Third and 11, I'm gonna make this catch across the middle. I try to finesse my way for the first, but I get tackled short. First and 10, I make an insane diving one-handed catch, and it was only for five yards. Making our way up the field, I run one of my favorite routes. I put a little move on the DB after the catch. Third and one, Cade actually does a good job leading me away from the DB, and I secure a 14-yard reception. Any and our efforts weren't enough to get this dub over Michigan State, and we have to watch their terrifying mascot get tossed around by the home crowd. I'm getting some great blocks on this kickoff return and I take it for a decent 36 yards. We need to make our way up the field to close up this lead and I run a great route to the sideline. Second to two, I notice this safety is sitting very high so I sit down right here between him and the corner and I make a nice catch for eight yards. K. McNam woke up on the right side of the bed today because he's delivering nothing but dots. I notice this corner playing off heavy so I shorten up my route a little bit. I make a miss and I get out of bounds. First and goal, K. his wide receiver Cornelius Johnson wide open and he walks in for a touchdown. Nebraska went and scored again, so I had to get back on kick return and get active, and I took it for a nice 39 yards. Very important third down situation. I make a move halfway through my route, and Cade does a great job leading me open in the space. First and 10, Cade hits my teammate wide open, and Nebraska catches a pick off the drop pass. First and 10, I do a great job running my route, but I get tackled just inches away from the first down. But on the very next play, I do a great job selling this route on the inside, and I secure this first down. 
We wanted to save ourselves some embarrassment and touch the end zone at least one more time, but Cade does what he do best, and he throws another pick. I'm on a mission today. Opening kickoff, I set my blocks up on the inside, and I take out for a nice 45-yard return to kick off this game. We get back in the return game. I get hit. I come down. I injure my right wrist, and I sit out the remainder of the quarter. Second and 10, I burn this DB at the line. The safety picked up on my teammate, so that left me wide open for a 36-yard reception. Second and 10, for some reason, me and my teammate running the exact same route, but Cade hits me on the sideline. Third and nine, trying to secure the first down. K hits me across the middle, but I get rocked by this DB. Second and 10, I get a step on this DB, and if K leads me properly, this is easily a huge game, but it get batted down in coverage. First and 10, I destroy this DB at the line. K does a fantastic job putting this ball out of harm's way, and I make an even better catch. But every time K does something great, you gotta expect the bat right after, and he throws a terrible pick here in the end zone. And just like that, we take another L, but this time to undefeated Northwestern on the road. Third and 14, K hits me across the middle for nine yards, but it's not enough for the first down. Second and four, I always do a great job selling this route, and K hits me on the sideline for 10 yards. Second and one, I sit down. I make a guy miss after the catch, and I pick up nine yards. First and 10, K said Julian not there somewhere. I go up top, and I make an outstanding catch for 30 yards. Second and 10, this corner gets a decent jam on me at the line, but K hits me wide open for another 30-yard reception. I sat out the rest of that possession. We got three points, but on the very next offensive possession, K delivers a pick six on a silver platter. Second and three, I'm running one of my favorite routes. I make this catch in stride and I pick up a nice 10 yards. It's too late to come back and win this game, but it's never too late to make big plays. And I pick up 22 yards right here. We took a pretty bad L here on the road, but I popped off with seven for a buck 20. Second and 10 here. I don't know what possessed K to throw this ball, but he lucky this wasn't a pick. Third and 10, K hits me across the middle for seven yards, but it's not enough to secure the first. Second and 10, I sun this DB at the line. I get hit hard, but I get up. I got that fine me today, but it's a rivalry game. Back in the return game, my guys are doing a great job blocking. I'm breaking tackles, bouncing it to the outside. I'm trying to go crazy. Punt return action. I'm finessing my way through traffic, getting good blocks. I take this one for 56 yards. I should have gotten to the end zone. Third and 11, K does a great job being patient in the pocket, and he hits my boy for a touchdown. Third and one, K hits me across the middle. I make multiple guys miss. If I didn't get tripped up right here, bro, this would have went for six. Back in the return game, we have to make something happen. I'm finessing my way through traffic, and I take this one for 51 yards. We've been eating them up all day across the middle and we continue to do that with this nice grab across the middle for a touchdown defense did a great job holding it down towards the end of the fourth quarter and we walk away with a dub against our rival ohio state we left bucks fans in shambles they thought they had an easy dub and my boy Cade has turned that to the game he balled out today this was easily mctrash's best game of the season he was even awarded player of the game honors we cap off our freshman season i end the year with 1030 yards a very slight but team high six receiving touchdowns now we go check out Cade mctrash a 127 QBR, 3,200 total yards, 22 touchdowns with 24 picks. I will say he played horrible this season, but our O-line was terrible and he did get sacked 31 times. My 1,030 yards lands me eighth amongst all of the other receivers in the country. I balled out this season. Even though I was a part of the worst offense in the country, I still went crazy and put up pretty decent numbers. Once I enter my name into the transfer portal, every team in the country is going to be lined up trying to get me to sign. So I guess the only question I have right now is what school should I go to? I transferred to NC State, a very talented, underrated, overlooked team. Quarterback Devin Leary is miles better than Mick Trash over there I had at Michigan. Ever since I got here to NC State, I put in a lot of work so I can dominate my sophomore season. I'm coming in as receiver number two in the depth chart, but I'm more than positive. After these first couple of games, I will take over that number one spot. There's already headlines in the city papers and all over social media that this is my team. This is off topic, but I'm not sure what helmet I want to rock this season. The AXP is cool, the speed is nice, and then the ion is just too tough. My goals for my sophomore season are simple. Crack 1,500 yards, 10 plus touchdowns, win the Bolitnikov, win the national championship, and become a Heisman Trophy winner as a sophomore. We got LA Tech at the crib, and we opened up this game with a nice 13-yard reception. First and 10, I tried making a move after the catch to get in some open space, but I get tackled for nine yards. Third and four, my quarterback, Jake Leary, hits me wide open, but I dropped this ball after contact. I got to hold on to this. Second and 10, I run my favorite route, bro. I put a move on this DB. I got so excited, I spent right back out of bounds, bro. This could have went for six. First and 10, this DB couldn't even get a jam at the line. That's a big mistake on his part, but I make this catch for 13 yards. Second and goal, my boy Jake should have threw this ball 
ball a little bit earlier, but I do make this catch for a quick three yards. First and 10, I destroy this DB at the line. My boy Jake does a great job putting this ball between the corner and the safety, and we take off for 25 yards. First and 10, this route was dead from the jump, so we had to improvise a little bit, and we pick up eight yards. First and 10, Jake Leary tried to fit this ball into a tight window, and he throws his first pick of the game. We start the season off right with a dub at home against LA Tech. Eight catches for 90 yards, not a bad first game here with my new team. If this game isn't a blowout, it's going to be a problem. We got FCS East at home. We opened up with a nice 13-yard catch. First and 10, after I made this catch, I thought I was going to take this into the crib with all this space, but I get tackled. I went at the line against this DB. I get a step inside, and my boy Jake Leary hits me for a big play. Third down situation, I do a great job looking off this DB halfway through my route. My boy Jake Leary hits me wide open for a 27-yard reception. Making our way up the field, first and 10, I go in motion, and Jake hits me for a nice 10-yard gain. Second and four, it's a lot of traffic at the top of this route, so I shorten it up a bit, and I pick up 17 yards. Now with a 17 point lead going into the second half, I make this DB look silly with this move after the catch. Trying to make our way into the end zone before the half and I get tackled just five yards away from the goal line. And on the very next play, Jake Leary hits my boy Jordan Houston for a five yard touchdown. Second and 11, I destroy this DB at the line. Then I make a 180 toe tapping catch. First and 10, I do a great job. I route up this DB, I make this catch and we pick up 19 yards. First and 10, I do a tremendous job selling this route on the inside. I break it off and I make a nice catch for a big play. Third and goal, trying to punch another one in. I don't win here at the line against this DB, but it don't matter because we in the end zone, baby. Let's go. Man, I went crazy today. 12 for a buck 81, a touchdown, no drops. I'm loving my new team. After that breakout game at home and a great practice, I take over the number one receiving spot. The first quarter of this game has been uneventful to say the least, and to make matters worse, Devin Leary throws a pick. We trying to close up this lead. We're down two scores, and to make things even worse than what they already are, we fumble and give Clemson great field position. But they're not going to stop your boy JD from making plays i make a nice grab across the middle for eight yards but when it rains it pours quarterback devin leary fumbles and clemson scoops it and walks in for another touchdown to further this lead first and 10 i hit this db with a little uh -uh, and devin leary puts this ball exactly where it needs to be third and 19 we desperately need this first down i do everything i can to try to get there but i get tackled just short we're down 27 points here in the third quarter i go up top to make a nice grab but i get rocked after the catch we're getting beat bad this game is pretty much over but i want to continue to make big plays and i pick up 11 yards and in blowout fashion clemson hands us our first l of the season i follow up my monsters game from last week with seven catches for 119 yards this week another home game but this week against central michigan and we get tackled just short of the end zone first and 10 this db was in his back pedal just a little too long if devin leads me a little bit more this was easily going for six now with a 10 point lead we trying to secure this fourth and 11 and that's exactly what i do picking up 13 yards first and 10 i was kind of open here my teammate came across so i had to improvise a little bit and I pick up the first down. I went here at the line against this DB. I get a step inside and Devin puts this ball into a very tight window. That's a great throw. First and 10, there's no high safety. We all know what this is. I went here at the line and I do a pointless but beautiful Cinderella spin in the end zone for a tug. I turn this short route into a complete highlight play. I make this catch. I make two guys miss. Come pick y'all players up. Trying to punch another one in here on first and 10. This ball could have easily been picked, but my hands in that ball has a different type of love connection. Now with a 21 point lead here in the third if you ask me this db was trying to make his way home he got lost on this route the dominance continues here on first and 10 my boy devin leary hits me across the middle for a nice 20 yard play we bounced back from our terrible loss last week with a great team win this week i received player of the game honors with 12 receptions 166 yards and two of them things let's go i sat out the majority of the first half due to cramping but when i checked back into the game i put my stamp on it immediately you know my big dog hyped me up after that one let's ball baby beautiful 20 point lead here in the third Devin Leary hits me across the middle for a nine yard pickup. Second and one, our offensive line did an amazing job protecting Devin, and we pick up 22 yards on this play. Third and 10, we're trying to pick up this first down. I get tackled three yards short, and now we're forced to punt. This is easily the best play of my career so far. I tear every tendon in this DB's kneecaps, and I take off for a 72 yard touchdown. I'm talking my talk to this Wake Forest defense. They can't touch me. I'm going to continue to dominate this Wake Forest defense. I destroy this DB at the line. I make a great catch for a tub in the back of the end zone. We celebrate in the middle of the field. This game was nothing short of pure dominance today. Hey, my boy Devin is feeling it. I've never seen him hype like this. I played out of my mind today. Seven catches for 139 and two tubs. Man, we balling. We open up this game the worst way possible. I don't know what possessed Devin to throw this ball in the covers like this. Third and a very long 15. We're trying to pick up this first down, but I only make this catch for 11 yards. Third and 12, Devin looks right at me, turns the other way, gets hit, fumbles the ball, 
ball and I have to make the touchdown saving tackle on this linebacker. First and 10, I do a great job bending this route inside. I go up top, make a nice catch for 37 yards. Second and two, Devin Leary actually makes a good play this time and he walks in for a three yard touchdown and we're finally on the board. First and 10, this DB got a pretty good jam on me at the line, but Devin hits me wide open for a big play. Second and five, we need to secure this first down. I get a slight step on this DB and Devin hits me across the middle. This game is pretty much over, but we definitely want to get in the end zone to close up this lead a bit, and we fail here on fourth down. Not gonna lie, Syracuse did a great job Xing me out of this game, and I only went for four catches and 78 yards. My quarterback, Devin Leary, easily had his worst game of the season as well, 25 of 42 with two picks. That's horrible. Me and Devin Leary, we have to get on the same page. We're halfway through the season, and I don't even have a 1,000 yards yet. We're still ranked within the top 20 teams in the nation, but a national championship is clearly out of the question. Trying to bounce back from that ugly loss against Syracuse, all we can do is get some rest over the bye week, lock in for our next game, and try to win out the rest of the season. Both of the L's we've taken this season so far come from two of the best teams we have on our entire schedule for the season. Looking at the rest of our schedule, we don't have any more ranked teams to play this season, but ECU could creep up in that top 25, so we can't sleep on them. Throughout the first half of the season, I've gained a decent amount of coach trust i'm just ready to unlock some of these abilities to have more control over the offense taking a look at the acc as a whole we're not even ranked within the top 10 team if miami and syracuse continues to dominate their division in this conference as a whole there's no chance we'll even sniff a conference championship game and right now as we speak the top five running backs in the country all have a hand on that heisman trophy after the bye week i dropped to fourth in the nation in receiving yards with 773 but i'm looking to have a big game next week and reclaim my number one spot but that won't be an easy task we're going head to head with a great FSU team this week. We're much better on paper, but me and the guys know we cannot sleep on this team. We gotta bring our A game and come out ready to dominate. I have six games left here in my junior season at NC State. I'll have three choices by the end of my junior season. Declare for the NFL draft, return to NC State for my senior season, or enter the portal and go try to win a national championship. We open up a rain game on the road against Clemson with Devin putting his ball into an extremely tight window. Second and three, I'm going to break off my route a little early. I'm going to make some crazy moves after the catch picking up eight on the play. First and 10, Devin hit me coming across the middle, but the rain get the best of me and I dropped this ball. Second and 13, I shared this DB at the line and I picked up the first down. First and 10, I do a great job getting this DB to get back into his back pedal and I run straight back to this ball to pick up five yards. Second and five, this DB is all over this route, so I do a little something extra and I pick up 14 yards. Second down, we need four yards for the first. Devin hits me across the middle. I get tripped up and I fall forward, picking up nine. No jam at the line. I love that. Devin squeezed this ball right by the linebacker just in time and I pick up the first down. Everybody knows I hate these quick screen plays, but it actually worked out here. I fall forward, picking up five yards. Two and a half minutes left in the third quarter i run a quick curl and i pick up eight tough yards this db makes a huge mistake trying to press me at the line i blow past him for the big play picking up big yardage watching how justin jefferson sells every route like it's a go route has been really beneficial for my comebacks and curls clemson takes this dub at home and we take our second l of the season 13 catches, 134 yards, but I didn't touch the end zone, so it's a pretty average day for me, I guess. My first ever snow game of my career, and we opened this one up with my teammates stealing my pass and picking up 30 yards. Second and five, I'm wide open. Devin set me up to get whacked by this DB, but the hit wasn't too bad. Third and five, this DB picks up on my teammate, which leaves me wide open on this curl, and I pick up 10 yards. I've been a dog in the red zone the entire season so far, and that ain't stopping for nobody. I pick up a touchdown on this play. First and 10, even though these linebackers are lurking there were multiple windows Devin could put this ball into but he ended up just throwing a duck third and two just not too far away from me my teammate catches this ball gets hit fumbles and unc walks into the end zone to further this lead first and 10 i hit the jets at the line Devin put this ball exactly where it needed to be and if i didn't get tripped up this was going for six fourth and 11 i'm wide open coming across the middle i could have easily caught this ball turned it up field and picked up the first but we only get seven yards on the play first and 10 i run my route with a defender trailing me and i barely take this ball away from this DB making a big play that could have easily been a pick third and seven I decided to run the comeback instead of this go route Devin throws an oblivious pick and UNC walks in for another defensive touchdown trying to bounce back from another one of Devin's huge mistakes we pick up seven yards on this play third and six I run full speed towards this DB I get him to open his hips and I run back towards this ball picking up nine yards second and four even with this DB playing off I still get a step on him with my elite speed and I pick up the first down I shed this DB and I pick up 35 Five yards on this play putting us in great field position to go down to score if we want any chance at winning this game we have to get into the end zone and that's exactly what i do making a beautiful toe tapping catch in the back of the end zone being down three 
scores against our rival is tough, but I'm going to continue to make big plays, picking up 27 yards here. We end up taking the L to UNC on the road. We fought the entire fourth quarter to get back into this game. I have one of, if not my best game of the season so far, and we take a L. The defense has to step up. We have the number 12 team in the nation on the road, and we open up this game with Devin doing what he's pretty much been doing the entire season. First and 10, I can tell this DB is scared for his life. I take a slight step outside, and Devin puts this ball exactly where it needs to be. I wish he could always be this consistent. This Syracuse secondary doesn't have a clue. This is the easiest catch and walk in touchdown I've ever had. First and 10, these Syracuse corners don't have a clue. I'm blowing these boys away with my speed. We pick up big yardage on this play. But even though here on second and four, I destroy this DB with this route, Devin throws another terrible pick. That's just his second in the first half. Only down three points, last play of the first half. I almost pulled off one of the greatest catches in traffic ever, but it wouldn't have meant anything anyway. Things go from bad to worse here late in the third quarter. Devin Leary tries to take Take off, he fumbles and Syracuse walks into the end zone for another touchdown. Devin Leary continues his campaign to become the worst quarterback in college football. He throws another oblivious pick. I didn't even call for this ball. First and 10, this DB has no safety help over the top. I hit him with a slight outside step. Devin hits me in stride and I take off into the end zone for a touchdown. The dominance on number 40 for Syracuse continues. I go up top, make a great catch. I break his tackle. Somebody need to pull him out of the game ASAP. Only down one score here late in the fourth. I make a great catch across the middle picking up the first we have to get into the end zone last play of the game number 40 is covering me with no help over the top and Devin Leary sails with a horribly underthrown pass I have another monster game and we take back-to-back -back L six catches 187 yards and two touchdowns but we got to do better as a team we're on a three game losing streak trying to bounce back at home against Duke and we open this game with a nice one-handed catch third and three I widen out this route a little bit and I completely lose this DB picking up the first down a crazy fourth and 12 situation i make this catch and i absolutely embarrass this db and i tumble in for a 50 yard touchdown the very next possession another fourth down situation i catch my second touchdown just here in the first quarter first and 20 forget that curl route i make this catch i make a guy miss break a tackle and i take this one back for 85 yards my third touchdown of the first half third and six i lose at the line against this db i make this catch i make three defenders look silly and i pick up 20 yards on this play another third down situation Devin puts this ball right over the linebacker's head. I run through this safety's face, picking up another 20 yards. Second and 18, my elite speed gets me wide open. Devin tossed this one off his back foot, and he throws a terrible pick. Third and 10, we're back at it with another terrible screenplay. So I do a little something extra, and I pick up 19 on the play. Backup quarterback Ben Finley checks back into the game after throwing a pick earlier in this game, and he delivers a dot that Devin couldn't dream of throwing. Third and 12, me and Ben Finley hook up again on another great play, picking up 32 yards. And with this this catch, I break Torrey Holt's single game receiving record with 272 yards. But even with Ben delivering some dots today, he shows exactly why he's not the starting QB throwing one of the worst picks I've seen all season. I continue to tack on yards and make big plays here late in the fourth quarter with a 14 yard reception. I received player of the game honors with my best performance of my entire football career. Not gonna lie, this teal turf at Coastal Carolina is beautiful. We're gonna open up this game picking up 15 on the play. Fourth and goal down here in the red zone, you know what time it is. Is put the ball in my hands. I'm going to walk in for a touchdown. A 14-point lead here early in the first half. I make a great catch across the middle, picking up the first. Trying to up this lead, fourth and goal. I'm coming across the middle in traffic, picking up my second touchdown of the first half. Just under five minutes left here in the second quarter, Devin puts this ball exactly where it needs to be, and I take off picking up 29 yards on the play. Second and six with these DBs playing off makes it perfect timing to run this curl route. I pick up the first down on this play. After a weird collision with that DB, I go down with a minor injury. They're not sure when or if I return back to the game. I sat out the remainder of the first half. When I check back into the game, I run a nice comeback route picking up 16 yards. It's only the third quarter and this game is a complete blowout. Coach is probably going to pull the starter soon, so I'm going to cap things off with a nice catch for 10 yards. 10 catches for 131 and two touchdowns early in the first half. I balled out today. Let's go. The final game of my junior season. I make this catch in stride. I get tripped up. I fumble the ball after making such a great play. But on the bright side, I break another one of Torrey Holt's records. The most receiving yards in a career here at NC State. First and 10, I run a great route. Devin puts this ball into a tight wind 
though, and I pick up 18 on the play. Third and nine, I extend this route a little bit, getting this DB to drop back, but I fall just short of the first down. We decide to go for it on fourth and one, and I pick up the first with ease. Second and goal, I come across the middle. I make the craziest, but one of the most dangerous catches I've ever made in my career for a touchdown. And with this catch, I break Torrey Holt's single season touchdown record. I'm officially the greatest receiver in NC State history. Second and eight, the O-line does a great job protecting Devin. He dots me up, and I pick up 14 yards. First and 10, I speed my way past this corner. Devin delivers a strike, and just like that, we're back in the red zone. I've never liked any of these screen plays, but here on second and two, I get shifty after the catch, picking up the first down. Up 35 to nothing here, third and six. Devin slightly underthrows his ball, but I go up top making an insane catch through contact. But we wouldn't be NC State without making some terrible mistakes. My teammate made this catch, and he fumbles the ball, giving Maryland the ball back. Third and 13, my last play before Coach pulls the starters. You know I got to make a play before I get out of here. I'm going to pick up 13 yards. I finished my final game of my junior season with 10 catches, 160 yards, and a touchdown. What a great day. We played very well today all around as a team. I finished my junior season number one in the country in receiving yards with over 1,900 yards. 122 receptions, 17 receiving touchdowns, the best stats in the country for a receiver by far. After putting up the best stats in college football, do I return from my senior season or do I enter the NFL draft? Let me know. We're 4-2 and two and so is FSU, but we opened up this game on second and five with a nice catch for five yards. First and 10, Devin Leary does a terrible job trying to put this ball over this corner and he throws an easy pick. Second and 13, my boy Devin hits me over the middle for a 16-yard reception. Third and 12, I turn a short play into a big one. I take this for 24 yards. Third and seven, all the DBs dropping back in their zone, so that leave me wide open. Devin hits me and I pick up the first down. Down 10 points here late in the third quarter. Devin hits me on the sideline and I pick up the first down. Backed up into our own end zone. Second and eight, Devin hits me wide open across the middle, but if he would have led me a little bit more, this could have went for six. First and 10, the O-line did a great job blocking on this play, and we pick up 20 yards. We desperately need a touchdown here late in the fourth quarter, and Devin doesn't hit me wide open. Instead, he throws the ball extremely late. We take an ugly L here on the road against FSU against some real competition. Even though I didn't score, I still had a decent game. Nine catches for a buck 21, not bad at all. We got UNC today, and I opened up with a great catch on a poorly placed ball. Second and one, this corner not up here on this line, buddy, I got wheels. I pick up 14 yards on this play. Third and nine here, no luck on the quick screen, so I take off and I pick up the first down, but it's a flag on the play. My tight end, Christopher Tootle, gets called for an offensive pass interference. Now with a 24-point lead, third and three, I make an amazing one-handed catch across the middle, and I pick up the first down. First and 10, I do a great job selling this curl route, but I get blasted after the catch. Second and inches, the middle of the field is crowded, so I abandon my route and I pick up this easy touchdown. First and 10, I beat this DB at the line. Devin hits me perfectly in stride. I almost take this one in for six. And right before the half here in the red zone, Jordan Houston walks in for an easy four-yard touchdown. Ten-point lead here in the fourth. First and ten, I make this catch, and I pick up 15 on the play. Second and three, I do a great job selling this round the inside, getting this DB to open his hips, and Devin hits me for a nice 35-yard reception. We get a great team win over Chapel Hill. The home crowd is loving it. They even tossing the mask out around. Everybody happy today. I love it. Ten catches for a buck 40 with a tub. No drops today? We balled out. In practice last week, I got into a fight with one of my teammates, and let's just say I got the best of them. So coach didn't let me play, but my boys did go out and get the dub. First and 10, this DB and this linebacker, they switch off mid-route, which is a terrible idea, and I pick up 12 yards. But as soon as we start to get some momentum, Devin Leary throws a pick, and he puts the ball right back in Boston College's hands. But here on 31, we bounce back. Jordan Houston takes off for a nice 10-yard touchdown. But I don't know what it is with Devin today. He is just not playing his game, and he throws another pick to the defense. I got in Devin's ear a little bit after those two picks, and he set me up with this linebacker to get sniped. First and 10, my boy Devin hits me in stride, and I take this one for four. 41 yards. I get up and I let him know with no safety help, it's over. Fourth and one, I make the weirdest, but probably the most beautiful catch that anyone has ever seen. Third and 16, I make a very high IQ play by picking up this block behind me and my boy Daryl Jones falls in for an easy touchdown. We barely get out of Boston College with a three-point win. Not my greatest game, but I made plays when it mattered. Five catches, 70 yards in the tub. 
I did my job. We got a snow game at home against ECU, but we opened up falling one yard short of the first down. First and 10, I refuse to not make a play here, so I'm running all over the field, and I finally get open, and I pick up a few yards. Third and seven, we got a lot of comebacks and curls today, but we pick up 13 yards on this play. Second and nine, no safety help. I'm about to cook this DB. I make the catch, break a tackle, and I take off for a 75-yard touchdown. Third and six, I'm going to come across the middle, make this catch for the first, but I do get hit hard by this safety. First and 10, we come across the middle again and we pick up the first down we're slowly but surely making our way up the field second and ten i run a comeback and i pick up the first very important fourth and inches the snow got the best of me on this release but i get wide open for an easy tug first and ten this db gets a bad jam at the line and devin puts this ball into a very tight window but i make a great catch here in the snow second and goal i do a great job getting open across the middle but i drop the ball upon contact this ball is very slippery out here in this snow we're down seven points we have to get in the end zone the top this game i call for the ball across the middle and devin leary throws a pick i know every single fan in the stands right now is wondering why would devin leary throw such an oblivious pick i had one of my best games of the season but i'm gonna be honest that pick was all on me i saw the linebacker lurking across the middle and i still call for the ball back here with another home game this week against maryland and we pick up eight yards on a nice catch across the middle first and goal no jam at the line this is free i come across the middle for an easy touchdown third and 11 devin hits me across the middle i break a tackle I go make a few guys miss and I pick up 15. And with that catch, I break Torrey Holt's single season reception record here at NC State. What a great record to break by a great player. Third and 10, I got a curl route. I pick up seven on the play, but we do fall short of the first down. Tie game here in the second quarter. First and 10, I make this catch stay in bounds, break a couple of tackles, and I pick up 26 yards. Second and two, Devin Leary does a great job putting this ball out in front of me. I catch it in stride and I take off for 35 yards. Third and five, I do a great job winning at the line against this DB and I pick up 12 yards on the play as soon as we started to run away with this game Devin Leary throws a terrible pick and just like that Maryland makes this a three-point game crucial fourth and sixth situation not only do I pick up the first down on this play but I make a move and I roll forward for 16 first and 10 I have a go route but I see a hole in coverage I bend this route hard inside and I make a great catch for a touchdown piggybacking off that momentum no jam at the line you know that's an easy tub and I pick up my third touchdown of the day I'm hype after the play I'm feeling good we finished the regular season with a dub over our rival Maryland and the guys are midfield and they're soaking it all in. This was my best game of the season. 14 catches for a buck 87 and three touchdowns. That's a game high for me this season. Duke's Mayo Bowl against Purdue and we opened up this game picking up six yards on this play. Second and four, Devin does a great job putting this ball out in front and I pick up 18 yards on this play. Third and two, I run this curl route more towards the sideline and I pick up this easy first down. First and 10, I bend this go route hard inside. Devin hits me for a big 24 yard play. On the very next play I had to improvise a little bit on this route to get open and I make a weird diving one-handed catch for eight yards fourth and two I shred this DB at the line Devin hits me in stride and I take off I tried my best to get into the end zone on this play third and two I secure the first down with this catch but I get blew up by two Purdue defenders and later here in the fourth quarter I break another one of Torrey Holt's records with the most receiving yards in a single season here at NC State and when it's all said and done a six and six Purdue team walks away with the dub here in the bowl game nine catches 140 46 yards, no touchdowns. I definitely could have contributed to my team more today. To cap off my sophomore season here at NC State, I finished with over 1,600 yards leading the country. My overall stats for my entire sophomore season are actually amazing. I put up better numbers than I expected, and I just balled out overall, but I did have way too many drops this season. And of course, putting up stats like that, I'm going to be a first team All American. But even though I put up the best stats in the country as a sophomore, I still only finished 12th in the Belenikoff race, which is odd to me. Going into next season, I got my mind focused on putting up big numbers so I can enter the NFL draft. If I can put up numbers remotely close to what I put up this season, I will without a doubt be a first round draft pick. But all I can do right now is lock in, train hard, and prepare to ball out next season and solidify myself to be a top draft pick. Game one of my junior season, and I'm going to open this one up with a nice catch for 18 yards. Third and seven, we need to pick up this first down. I add a little something extra to this curl and I pick up 14. No jam at the line from this DB. We love that. I come across the middle and I pick up this first down. Second and goal, we got a design screenplay for myself. My teammate picks up the wrong block and I get blew up. 
off on this play. Third and six, we have another weak screen play, bro. I get blew up again, and number four stood over me like he owned me. I don't like that. First and 10, Devin does a great job putting his ball right over the linebacker, and we pick up 21 yards. Third and nine, we need a big play here to get the first, and who better to call on than your boy JD? Five minutes left in the first half, second and 10. I struggle at the line a bit, but I make a guy miss after the catch on this play. Back in the red zone with no press coverage, we're going to pick up an easy 12-yard touchdown. That was free. First and 10, I run a great route. Devin Leary does a great job putting his ball exactly where it needs to be. I'm hype after this play. My boys already know what time it is. Second and 10, I absolutely destroy this DB on this route. Then I do a great job adjusting to make this catch for 29 yards. First and 10, we're back at it with the screens. This DB hit me extremely low. It's almost like he targeted my knee. He could have ended my career with this hit. I sat out the rest of that drive after that nasty hit, and when I check back in, I get hit high. This could have been a targeting call. Last play of the first half, a one-on-one, -on -one, he's pressing and no safety high. You know that's a kill. I beat him at the line, and I make a great catch for 26 yards. We're kicking off the quarter with just a five-point lead, and I make this catch one yard short of the first down. Down one point under a minute left here in the fourth. We're trying to lead the miracle drive, and I pick up nine yards across the middle. We marched our way down the field, back into the red zone, and Devin Leary walks into the end zone for a four-yard touchdown to take the lead. We stay on the field to go for the two-point conversion, and Devin Leary knows exactly who to get the ball to. Let's go, baby. I kick my junior season off with 15 catches for 220 and a touchdown. Oh yeah, it's about to be a good season. We got Old Dominion here at the crib, but we in that all black, and we gonna open up picking up 27 yards on this play. Second and inches with a clean pocket. Devin could have took off or threw this ball away, but instead he throws a terrible pick to Old Dominion's defense. Second and 13, Devin Leary squeezes this ball into the tightest of tightest windows, and I just was not ready for this ball. I work my magic at the line. I win here against this DB, and Devin does a great job putting this ball between the safety and the corner. A minute left here in the first half. Devin could have hit me wide open, but instead he throws a ball bomb to my teammate for a touchdown. Second and two, I run a great route. Devin puts this ball into a very tight window and I make probably one of the most acrobatic catches you'll ever see. In goal, I stumble at the line, but I come across the middle and I make this catch through contact for a touchdown. My teammate hyping me up. We already know we finna go crazy. Anytime there's no high safety, you know I'm gonna make a play. Second and five, Devin hits me perfectly in stride and I pick up 34 yards on the play. Under three minutes left here in the fourth quarter, Devin Leary tries to take off. He fumbles and he gives Old Dominion a chance to go down and take the lead. Defense when he got the ball back, giving us some great field position. And third and two, I'm going to come across the middle and I pick up six yards. A very gutsy call to stay on the field here on fourth and 10. And I make this catch for exactly 10 yards. We put the game in the hands of our kicker and he knocks this field goal down with 22 seconds left in the game. I finished up with seven tackles for a buck 20 and a touchdown. I had a solid game. We got a road game against USF. And here in the first quarter, we couldn't start this game any worse with a huge turnover. First and 10, no press at the line. Yeah, you know what this is. I hit the DB with a little uh -uh, takeoff. I hit the Jets and I pick up 38 yards on this play. So far this season, I've been a monster in the red zone. And here on second and three, that dominance continues as I pick up a quick touchdown. We really need to convert here on third and six and Devin hits me across the middle to pick up seven yards. Just over five minutes left in the first half. The middle of the field is wide open. I make this catch and I get smacked one yard short of the first down. First and 10, I probably shouldn't cut this route this short and I get clapped just a few yards away from the end zone. Third and four, Devin Leary has all day to get rid of this ball. He bails out way too early and he gets tackled and now it's third and four. Third and 12, it's a tie ball game, just over two minutes left here in the fourth and this play was a disaster to begin with. We ended up getting the ball back, kicking the field goal, taking the dub over USF on the road, but this was easily my worst game so far this season. We're currently undefeated and we're gonna have to ball out today against a great Wake Forest team in order to stay that way. Second and nine, we're gonna come across the middle. We pick up the first down, but we definitely paid for it with a nasty hit. Down here in the red zone, I'm wide open coming across the middle and so is Anthony Smith and he picks up the touchdown my boy is going crazy we kick this game off making big plays and leave it to Devin Leary to throw an oblivious pick to destroy all of our momentum tie ball game here just over two minutes left here in the first half I make a nice catch across the middle to pick up five. Second and ten this DB is playing so far off I had to sit down and pick up these easy 14 yards biggest mistake of this DB's life walking down trying to press me I beat him at the line Devin hits me in stride and I get tripped up into the end zone for a 46 yard touchdown it's a new week but we still running these same old broken screen plays and I get lit up before I can go anywhere. A huge decision stand on the field on fourth and six. I run a great route. I make this catch and I get tripped up just before I get into the end zone. I wanted that touchdown bad. Nine catches for 122 yards and a touchdown. That's a great way to bounce back after a terrible performance last week. We're 4-0. Boston College is 0-4 and I open up this game with probably one of my sickest plays of the season. I pick up 30 yards. Second and one, you know I'm the red zone monster. I make this catch putting us on the board. I'm cooking early. Third and 
and goal, I get a slight step on this DB. I make a great one-handed catch, but I fall just short of the end zone. Just over two minutes left here in the first half, I get a nice step inside on this release, and I make this catch for 12 yards. Second and six, I run a simple route across the middle. I pick up six yards on the play, but somehow I don't get the first down. Under a minute left in the first half, first and 10, even though I called for this ball, this was a terrible pick by Devin. He should have knew not to throw this ball into such heavy coverage. I get a great inside release on this corner. I make a nice move after the catch, but I don't pick up the first down. First and 10, I do a really good job getting a step on this DB. Devin throws this ball slightly behind me, but I do still take off for the big play. Fourth and inches, two minutes left here in the fourth quarter, tie game. I make a big catch across the middle to convert the first down. And here on second and two, this DB is dreaming if he thought he was going to get a jam on me, and I pick up the touchdown to take the lead here late in the fourth. This game should not have been this close, but at the end of the day, a win is a win, and me and the guys are hype after this dub. Both coaches meet in the middle, and now that I think about it, low key, they kind of look like twins. And my boy Devin Leary is awarded player of the game honors. Nine for one on one and two tubs. Yeah, we needed all of that today. We got conference play at home against six and one FSU, and we pick up 13 yards on this play. Third and seven, I stumble with my release, and Devin, I guess he's trying to target someone on FSU sideline with his pass. And here on third down, I do everything I can to avoid these linebackers, but it ultimately costs us the first down because I get tackled short. Now down 20 to nothing nothing in the first half we have to make big plays i pick up 13 yards on this play second and seven this db gets a great jam making me stumble at the line but i make a great catch through contact for six yards now down 20 to seven we need to gain some momentum and we do the complete opposite with devin leary fumbling the ball and giving fsu great field position second and four i win here at the line against this db and i go up top top to make this catch to pick up 14. under a minute left here in the third and at this point i'm pretty sure devin has a concussion because who is he throwing the ball to here on this play we kick off this fourth quarter with a great catch across the middle picking up six. My quarterback Devin Leary saw something in this defense. He calls to hurry up and he hits me across the middle again for seven yards. First and 10, I run this route more towards the sideline. I pick up 19 yards. I'm starting to heat up. This game might not be over just yet. Devin calls to hurry up. We run the same exact play and we pick up another 21 yards. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. A major fourth and 11 situation. You know you can count on me to make the big play, but you can also count on a teammate to get a flag thrown on such a pivotal down. First and 10, I told them boys let me cook. I make a great catch across the middle. I hit this DB with the filthiest juke ever. I sent him flying into the turf. He thought he had an angle on me. First and 10, the middle of the field has just been free this entire fourth quarter. I pick up another 16. Second and 10, I do a great job selling this route inside. I get wide open and all Devin had to do was lead me into open space, but instead he throws a terrible pick. Second and 10, I sit down. I tried making a move after the catch, but this DB absolutely flatlines me. We come back with the same play and that DB, they hit me hard. I hit him with a nasty spin move, sending him flying out of bounds and I pick up 15 on the play. But every piece of momentum we've gotten this entire game has been snatched away by my quarterback, Devin Throw the Pick Leary. We get our socks blew off at the crib and I have one of my best statistical games of the season thus far. We dropped the number 21 in the nation after that L against FSU. I think a national championship is clearly out of the question. We're currently ranked number six in the ACC. If we want to even sniff a conference championship, we have to win out the rest of the season. Taking a look at the back half of our schedule, the only teams that might put up a fight are Clemson and Syracuse. Everybody else, we should stomp over them pretty easily. I'm ranked ninth in the country in receiving yards. I should be number one. I'm easily the best receiver in the country, but with Devin throwing all these picks, you can't tell. 59 receptions, 815 yards, almost 14 yards per catch, six touchdowns, and 135 yards per game. Am I not balling right now? And if we take a look at my starting quarterback, 140 for 197, 1600 yards, 12 touchdowns, and nine picks. He's not playing bad, but he needs to be playing a lot better, especially if I'm producing at the level that I am. This will be my second season here at NC State, my second year falling short of a natty, and my second year falling short of all of my personal goals I set for myself. All I really want is a national championship, but as a team, we can't accomplish that with the subpar quarterback play and the lackluster play calling at times. We got to do better all around. If we can't achieve a conference championship or even a big time bowl game, I'll have a big decision to make here at the end of my junior season. With the roster stacked with talent and we can't win out and finish this season on a high note, 
I might be taking my talents elsewhere to compete for a national championship. After careful consideration and taking everything into account, USC is the place I want to ball at for my senior season to win a national championship. Even though we're stacked at the receiver position, I come in as wide receiver number one. I barely edge out Jordan Addison for this spot. My first game as a Trojan on the road against Hawaii, and I open up this game the best way possible with a 66-yard touchdown. First and 10, I go untouched throughout my entire route, and I pick up 20 yards on this play. There's a bunch of great receivers on this USC team, so I'm making sure I come out here today establishing myself as the true number one receiver of this team. The connection I've established with Caleb Williams day one is amazing. He's putting the ball exactly where it needs to be. I picked up my third touchdown just halfway through the third quarter, and by then, coach was ready to pull the starters. My first home game here at USC, and Caleb Williams delivers a dot to the back of the end zone, and I pick up TD number one of the day. First and goal, I win at the line against this DB, and just like that, we're up 27-7 to before halftime. This game is starting to shape up to be a blowout, but here late in the third quarter, we continue to make big plays, picking up big yardage. But to add insult to injury here on third and seven, I make a nice move after the catch and I use my elite speed to get around the corner and we pick up another touchdown. We celebrate our big home game win midfield. We balled out today. Even though I didn't have a huge day yardage wise, I picked up three touchdowns and I received player of the game honors. We got Boston College today and picking up 35 yards on a huge reception is a clear sign that I'm gonna have a big day today. I've been a monster in the red zone my entire college career and that's not gonna change now that I'm here at USC. We only need three yards to pick up the first down, but why not make a huge play and pick up 23 yards on the play? Second and two, they get no hands on me at the line. I make this catch in stride and I take this one all the way back for a touchdown. We're down 10 points and we need a big play so we can go down and score and Caleb Williams puts the ball in my hands. He knew exactly what to do with it. Caleb has been leaning on me all game to make big plays and nothing's gonna change down here in the red zone. I make this catch to close up this lead. We're trying to get within field goal range, but I have other plans. I make this catch in stride break a tackle and walk into the end zone for the game winning touchdown and with that catch i break a school record marquise lee single game receiving record 364 yards on the day 13 catches for 364 yards and four touchdowns including a game winner we're three and zero, and so is arizona state somebody gonna have to walk out of here with their first l of the season destroying dbs at the line is my specialty and i do just that and that frees me up to score my first touchdown of the game so far throughout the first half we only put up seven points we have to step it up or we're gonna lose this game. I make the biggest play of the day making this catch in stride, taking this one up the sideline. I go untouched, diving into the end zone for a touchdown. Third and inches, we're looking to further our lead and Caleb Williams hits me wide open across the middle of the field for my third touchdown. Five catches for a buck 42 and three touchdowns, a very slight day by my standards, but we got the dub. A very rare sighting seeing me on the kickoff return, but I take this one back for a crazy 55 yards. I almost take it back to the crib. I haven't had a chance to show that I can go up top and make big catches, but on this underthrown ball by Caleb. I do exactly that on this play. We need to get into the end zone before halftime, and when we're in the red zone, you know you can always call on my number and I'm going to make the play. This is easily the filthiest play of my football career. Making this catch, staying in bounds, making a move after the catch, and taking this one all the way in for a touchdown. I follow up that huge play with an even bigger one, making guys miss in space, taking this one all the way in for a touchdown to secure the blowout win against Arizona. Five catches, 174 yards, and three major touchdowns. My longest one to day was 65 yards. That's crazy. Right now, I'm third in the Heisman race, projected to move up to the number two spot soon, but if I want to win it, I have to continue to ball at an extremely high level over the rest of the season. When it comes to the Pac-12, we're undefeated, and so is Oregon. If we both finish this season now undefeated, we'll be in for a huge conference championship game at the end of the season. A ranked matchup against another historically great team in Notre Dame. We're on the road today, and I'm looking to have a big game. After my first catch, I spent most of my time on the sideline due to an injury, but I checked back into the game, making a big play when my team needed me the most. We need to put up points to either tie this game or take the lead and Caleb Williams puts this ball on the money and we take the lead here late in the fourth quarter. We get the close win on the road against Notre Dame and we finish halfway through the season remaining undefeated. There's no better way to start a game than on third and 16 to make a catch and take it to the crib for an 81 yard touchdown. There's no safety help for these Utah cornerbacks and that's a huge mistake. Caleb Williams has no problem hitting me in stride and I take this one back for my second touchdown just in the first quarter. And my dominance continues here in the first half. I make this catch in stride and I leap in for my third touchdown just here in the first half. Even though I'm balling out right now, it's still a one possession game. So I take off, I beat this corner and I pick up a 51 yard touchdown diving into the end zone. We're here in overtime and we desperately need to get into the end zone. I turn what was a quick screen into the easiest touchdown I've ever caught in my life. Defense winning got to stop. All we have to do is go down and score and Caleb Williams hits me deep in the back of the end zone for my sixth touchdown in the game winner. I received player of the
of the game honors with probably my best game of the season putting up six total touchdowns we got oregon state this week on the road and i pick up where i left off with a big play here in the second quarter first and goal this db doesn't have a clue i use my elite speed to fly right past him picking up my first touchdown of the game second and ten my elite route running skills are on full display i completely lose this db and caleb williams puts this ball exactly where it needs to be for a touchdown me and caleb continue to hook up making big plays picking up first downs and our defense keeps oregon state out of the end zone they're doing a great job today even though i had under 100 yards receiving today i still somehow managed to become player of the game we got two and seven cow this week and we start this game off burning their number one corner picking up 35 yards on this play somehow cow has a seven point lead here in the second quarter but here on first and ten i take off making a big catch for a huge play we're down 10 points here late in the fourth quarter to a two and seven cow team we desperately need a big play and of course i'm gonna answer with that second and ten i sell this route inside get a step outside and i make this catch getting tackled into the end zone and we take the late fourth quarter lead we celebrate this win midfield what a great late fourth quarter effort by me and my guys i'm starting to develop into an elite route runner turning simple go routes into masterpieces i take this one in for 82 yards for a touchdown after going down to the wire with a two and seven team last week nothing short of dominance will be tolerated this week i pick up my second touchdown of the game and with this catch i break the ncaa record for the most receiving touchdowns in a single season first and ten somehow we're down a score once again to a lesser opponent but i take off past this cornerback picking up my third touchdown of the game going into halftime down the score is just not an option for me i take off past this corner picking up another touchdown making this an even game i haven't had any success with jet sweeps this season but that was soon changed with me taking this hand off blazing up the sideline picking up big yardage it was a close one here at home but we take the dub and i walk out of here player of the game once again with four total touchdowns we're 10 and 0 and that undefeated season is very close to being accomplished but we have to take care of colorado on the road today I've been tearing up just about every defense on these go routes. I sell them inside, I take it back out, and I go up and make a catch, and I walk into the end zone for yet another touchdown. And with this catch, my boy Caleb Williams breaks the USC school record for the most passing touchdowns in a single season. We're currently up one score here late in the second quarter. Me and Caleb continue to connect and make big plays. He throws his ball upfield, and I pick up 30 yards with this catch. A minute left here in the third quarter, I shred this DB at the line. I take out towards the end zone, and I make this amazing catch right over this db's head for a touchdown we dominated colorado today taking a 42 to 24 win here on the road and we improved to 11 and 0 a pretty quiet first quarter for me against ucla so i'll open up the second quarter with a really nice 30 yard play right here second and 15 with a simple go route going towards the end zone and caleb williams couldn't have thrown a better ball he puts this one exactly where it needs to be and i score touchdown number one of the day it's a one score game here late in the second quarter but that was soon changed with me making this catch breaking this tackle and taking off towards the end zone for my second touchdown with the final score of 38 to 35, we managed to complete the undefeated regular season. We barely edge out UCLA here at home. We finished this season one of three teams left undefeated throughout the entirety of the season. We're 12 and 0, so is Louisville and Ohio State. I'm the front runner currently for the Heisman. Caleb Williams is a close second. He's right behind me. He's my teammate, but there's no way I can let him edge me out to win this award. The Pac-12 championship game against number four Oregon. If we win this game, we can go play for my ultimate goal, something I've been wanting my entire career college career a national championship it's a tie game here late in the second quarter of the pac-12 championship and i explode for a huge play right before halftime third and 20 what should have been a simple curl route turns into the toughest play of my life breaking three tackles walking into the end zone for a touchdown second and 10 i go throughout this route untouched and caleb williams puts this ball in the very back of the end zone i make a nice toe tapping catch for another touchdown once again for maybe the eighth time this season i receive player of the game honors we take home the Pac-12 championship trophy and for the first time in my career it feels amazing to actually win something of importance and your Heisman Trophy winner is your boy Mr. Julian DeLeon the 5 foot 11 undersized Hispanic receiver we gonna kick this game off with a huge 35 yard catch under a minute left here in the first quarter me and Caleb Williams are gonna connect on a huge play I take off towards the end zone picking up an early touchdown taking the lead over Ohio State first and 10 here to kick off the second quarter I take off on this go route sell it inside i make this catch and i walk into the end zone i advance our lead to 14 to nothing first and 10 i break off from my go route a little bit caleb throws this ball extremely low but i make this crazy catch for a nice 20 yard under a minute left here in the second quarter i take off towards the end zone i make this catch and i dive into the end zone giving us a 21 to nothing lead at half 21 to 7 lead of ohio state here in the third quarter i have my best player today breaking the tackle leaping my way into the end zone for another touchdown we absolutely 
dominated Ohio State today, and I'm pretty sure the entire country is shocked. But I capped this game off with a huge 51-yard reception. And just like that, we're national champions, the only undefeated team left in the country. What a storybook ending to my college career. Record-breaking numbers for my senior season here at USC, bro. I absolutely balled out of control this year. My final year as a collegiate athlete has come to an end, and now it's time to enter the NFL draft. After a season like that, there's no question that I'll be a top three pick in the draft. And now that it's all said and done, I think it's safe to say that I am the greatest offensive player in college football history. My name is Julian DeLeon, the most dominant wide receiver to ever play college football. Now, as great as I was in college, getting here to where I am today to becoming a projected top three pick in the draft was not easy. Coming out of high school, I was a five-star recruit, the only ranked Hispanic player in my class. I had offers from just about every school you can think of, and I decided to attend the University of Michigan. But things did not work out in Michigan. Poor quarterback play, favoritism being showed towards other receivers, bad play calling, you name it. So after my freshman year, I transferred to NC State, and I was the guy day one. I got every opportunity that I deserved that I worked for. It was right in my hands. I was balling, breaking all the school receiving records, really dominating college football, but my quarterback, Devin Leary, threw a NCAA record for the most picks in the season. I voiced my concerns to the team and the coaches, and oddly enough, they sided with Devin over me. So for my junior season, I transferred to USC to ball with Caleb Williams. And for the first time in my college career, I had a competent quarterback who wasn't prone to throwing picks and just making bonehead mistakes. Also, keep in mind, we had guys like Jordan Addison and Mario Williams on the roster, but everyone knew I was the clear-cut wide receiver number one, and they did everything to keep the ball in my hands. We ended up going undefeated and winning a national championship, something I didn't even think was possible my first couple years in college. My one season at USC, I put up video game-like numbers. I won just about every offensive award you can think of, including the Heisman. And with the eighth pick, I get drafted by the Houston Texans. My first ever NFL game, and it's at home, this is so surreal. There's a lot of key differences going from college to the league, especially as a first round draft pick. It's been an extreme adjustment period for me. Like these corners, DBs in general in a league are on a different level. Most of these guys played at the highest level in college, so you're going against that every single week. And if the quarterback play is subpar, average, bad, or just overall terrible, I can't just up and leave the next season. I got to see it through. I really don't have a choice. And that bad quarterback play I'm speaking about is on full display. Me and Davis Mills have somewhat of a connection, but I don't think that'll save us from the mistakes he's making. But no matter what, bad quarterback play, non-existent run game, terrible defense, no matter what happens, when I get a chance to make a play, I'm going to step up and I'm a ball. And with that, I score my first career NFL touchdown. And even though we're getting destroyed by the Colts, this fan base is going crazy, showing love, embracing their new star rookie receiver. Don't get me wrong, I don't expect us to compete with some of the best teams in the league this soon, but this loss was just straight up embarrassing. I'm kind of spazzing out before we could even reach the tunnel. Some of the vets are telling me to calm down and hold my head, but I can't help but be upset. We got a packed out stadium and play a terrible game. Here in my first game, I only had five receptions, but five huge receptions, 151 yards in my first career touchdown. Not a bad debut. There's two key things that I focused on more than anything before the season even started. That's my route running and releases. There's something weird I noticed about the league. Throughout camp, practice, and the one game so far that we played, and even this one so far, there's not a lot of press man covers going on. Now, I know this won't be an every week occurrence, and it's subject to change, but in college, I had somebody lined up in my face ready to put hands on me every single play just about. No matter how well you get off the line, how well you run your routes, or how much separation you create within your routes, if your quarterback is overthrowing you like this, I mean, I have no words. And another thing I've learned since being in the league and watching a lot of film on a lot of great receivers today, you don't want to be one-dimensional, and I'll explain what I mean by that. A guy like Michael Thomas, an extremely gifted receiver, can do just about anything you ask him to at the receiver position, but he's mainly known for his slant routes, hence the nickname Slant Boy. But he seemed to be a very one-dimensional receiver, but then you got guys like Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson, great off the line, pristine route runners, can do just about everything, very versatile players. And it's early in my career, and I know I'm saying a lot by saying this, but I want to play at that elite level, but it's much easier said than done. Make that two. Two back-to-back -back L's, one at home, one on the road, man wearing for a long season. A few more receptions this week than the last, another 100 plus yard performance and a touchdown. My campaign for Offensive Rookie of the Year continues on a hot streak. We got Chicago this week, at Chicago, and I have no doubt in my mind, I'm a Friday secondary. We gonna bounce back this week and get our first dub, I'm calling it. I wouldn't say I'm undersized, but at 5'11", 180 pounds, coming across the middle can be very dangerous for a guy my size. And wait, 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 can we take one second to appreciate this beautiful spin-off I put on this safety? This was nasty to pick up the first down. 
the few corners that have come down and pressed, man, I've been destroying them. Winning at the line with my releases, making a big play almost every single time. Studying these DBs have really been paying off. I've been going crazy against these corners these last couple of games, but I want parts of some of the best. The Sauce Gardeners, the Pats of Tans, Jalen Ramsey's. Those are the guys I got to win against. Because one thing I know for sure, if you want to make a name for yourself in this league, you have to compete and dominate against the best. I won't be surprised if Davis Mills breaks the NFL record for most picks thrown in the season. He's giving me flashbacks of my life when Devin Leary was my quarterback. But one thing I can say about that boy D Mills, we do have a great connection. When I have certain releases, he knows exactly when and where I want the ball. And I pick up my third touchdown on the day. And we pick up our first win of the season, a road win at that. Right now, I'm just hoping we can keep rolling with this momentum. And D Mills, he showed out 341 yards passing, four touchdowns. I know this won't be a regular thing, but we're going to enjoy it while we can. But one thing you can count on always is for me to step up and ball at my fullest potential. Nine receptions, 135 yards, and three big touchdowns. Kicking this one off against the Chargers with some great field position. And Davis Mills put this in a very tight window. I should have scored on this one. Call me crazy, but all this week, I look forward to going against this cornerback safety duo in Derwin James and J.C. Jackson. When it come to man coverage, I dominate every time, especially when they have one high safety or none at all. But I'm still learning how to attack these zones properly. I said I, meaning me, was ready against the matchup against J.C. Jackson, but instead he's bullying the third receiver on our depth chart. He's not over here guarding the number one. What's going on? I already feel disrespected. I know I'm a rookie and you're an established corner, but you better get over here and guard me. It's obvious that I'm the number one receiver. I'm a problem. Am I? I mean, I continue to eat up the middle of the field, big play after big play, and then I completely embarrass number 24, and you mean to tell me I'm not worthy of being guarded by your number one corner? Stop playing with me. He already has one, but make it two picks on the day for J.C. Jackson, but this one, oh, he gonna take it back to the crib for a pick six. Why is Mills even throwing it his way still? Why would Davis Mills throw this ball straight in the covers like this? I count five white jerseys surrounding me, and Derwin James gets his first pick of the day. Like, come on, bro. Not gonna lie, this game has gotten completely out of hand, but that ain't gonna stop me from making big plays. I'm gonna sell this round the inside, get back out, climb the ladder to make the catch for the big play. <sighs> this is a good route. I'm lined up inside, I get back to the sideline, Mills throws a questionable ball, but I get absolutely bullied and that picker just sealed the game. We count it, our third loss within our last four games. I continue to play at a high level, but as a team, we just cannot rally together to even compete at a decent level against these great teams. After the loss last week, during practice, I got an opportunity to do something I thought I wouldn't be able to do for at least another two or three years. So we had a players meeting that was held by some of the vets on the team, and surprisingly, when I walked in, all eyes were on me for some reason. The meeting wasn't all about me, but it was more them acknowledging that I've been putting it all out on the field every single week, and as a team, we just all want to be on that page. And can somebody please tell me why these Jaguar fans are so bitter? I know I just scored on y'all team and I'm going crazy, but embrace me. Come on, I'm the young star of the league. Show me some love. When I see this press man, I see a plate and I'm going to eat every time. I kill him at the line, get upfield, make the big catch. And if I didn't get tripped up, this would have been a huge touchdown. That boy Davis dropped back so deep in the pocket on this one, had forever to get rid of the ball, then ended up throwing it right in the coverage, but the corner didn't make the play, so touchdown. You want to talk about running a great route, avoiding the jam, making the catch in open space, but that dive was pathetic. I got to remember, this is not college. Kicking out the fourth quarter, we got the lead, but we got to keep our foot on the gas. That Jaguar offense is very high powered, and if we let up in the slightest, they could take over. See, back in college, I was known for my toe taps, even when I only had to have one foot in for it to count as a catch, but now you got to have both of them things inbounds. Don't get on my head too much, but I honestly feel in my humble opinion that my toe tap game is on par with some of the best in the league. Argue with me if you want. It wouldn't be a National Football League game without Davis Mills throwing a pick in the first quarter. I lost all faith in this man. I, I give up. I mean, I appreciate the team recognizing my efforts and my hard work, but can we acknowledge the bad? Can we acknowledge that our quarterback is terrible, that our defense has given up 21 points in the first half? Coming into the league, I knew it would be hard. Going from college to the NFL and actually getting drafted by a rebuilding franchise, but dealing with it firsthand is just, it's different. And with dealing with it all firsthand and understanding the league just a little bit better, I really truly see why a lot of players chase the bag over everything else. Seeing guys in the league that'll chase rings, chase the best situation possible, or even come to a team like this who are rebuilding, but they'll get the bag and lose and not care. But being honest, as much as I love the financial position that being in the league can put you in, I can't put money over my success or my legacy. And I don't say that to say I'm not about my bag, because when my contract year comes up, if I got an opportunity to stay here or go elsewhere and get the bag, I will do that. 
this season, if not my career here in Houston, is going to be packed with inconsistency and just a complete roller coaster ride. One minute we lose, we win, then we lose even worse. Now, there's still plenty of football still left to be played this season, but I can tell these teams we play against and our own fans have already counted us out. But speaking on the bag, the things I've been able to do for my family since entering the league has been crazy, really life changing for real. And everything I've done so far since coming into some real money has been for my family. Mom, dad, siblings. I bought a huge crib back home in Mile City, Montana. But for myself, I really ain't bought nothing. Not a bunch of cars, clothes, jewelry, none of that. That's really not my thing. I'm trying to save as much money as possible. Like I haven't even bought a house or renting some crazy expensive condo. I'm in a very small studio apartment and materialistic things just don't wow me. Honestly, I wouldn't even have that if I had the choice. I would do what Ocho did back in the day when he played for the Bengals. I would live at the stadium. They literally have everything you need and then you're right there at work. I'm not being cheap for the sake of being cheap. When it comes to this league, guys come and go all the time. You can have a very long career or a very short one, and I want to be prepared for either outcome. But best believe when I get to that point in my career where I'm worth 25, 30, even $40 million a year, I think a little bit of splurging will be justified, just a little bit. And can we take a moment to acknowledge that I am frying this Titans defense right now? We got the lead going into the fourth. This could be a huge bounce back game at the crib. And for once, I'm finally rewarded down here in the red zone after setting us up here in the red zone and Davis actually hits me for the touchdown. But we got to keep the pressure on. Tennessee is right on our heels. But press is my middle name. I whipped this right outside and Davis puts this ball on my chest and we put this one away. Playing out of my mind. You see the stats. It's something about playing against this home crowd, especially when the stadium is packed out. I just got to go crazy. Man, we got the Eagles this week, and they the real deal on both sides of the ball. The only plus is, though, we're at home. This defense has very few vulnerabilities, so any chance I get to find a hole in the zone or fry one of their corners and man, I got to execute. We're down seven here in the first half. Lined up inside, I run a great route to the outside, and Davis puts this ball on the money, and we tie this one up. One of the more undervalued things for me personally, especially when it comes to the league, is taking whatever you can get, whether it's a small play, small gain, just a first down, whatever. I can't count how many times where I had a comeback, a drag, or a hitch, but I signaled Caleb Williams to let him know I'm running a go route or a deep post. And at the time, that was okay because there was so much press man being played, I would win at the line and just burn the corner and be wide open for the big play every time. I can probably count on one hand how many times I've been pressed at the line within these last eight games, but I can understand that. When you got guys in the league with elite speed, you got to play a zone. And that goes back to my transition from college to the league. I have to learn how to switch gears, not run at full speed all the time and how to really run my routes with detail. Running full speed and attacking the secondary isn't just some lost art. I do exactly that here late in the fourth quarter. I make the catch, break the tackle, get into the end zone to take the lead. Even though we executed as an offense very well today, it wouldn't help our defense keep Philly out of the end zone. They take the lead late in the fourth quarter and we ultimately lose this game. We're here at the halfway mark of the season, and I think it's safe to say we ain't touching no playoffs, especially with Davis on his campaign to be the worst quarterback in the league. Bro, there go that press man covers that I love. I'm going to win at the line every time, but this makeup speed by this safety to get from the midfield to me is crazy. <sighs> I'm doing everything I can. I ran this beautiful route. This ball should have been placed on the sideline for a toe tap, but instead it lands in the hands of a defender. Anytime we play a team where their defense is their weakness, I got to go crazy. I have to dominate, and if I don't high point this ball, this is probably a pick for this safety. It's obvious, but not a surprise, that players in the league watch way more film than college guys. They will literally play to offset your skill set, and I see it week in and week out. There's no corner in the league that can just completely erase me from a game or just lock me down, and that goes for a few other receivers in the league, but what you can do is slow us down. In man coverage, I can destroy a corner all day long, but in zone, it's more likely for me to be tackled after the catch, and it reduces the likelihood of the big play. Not saying it's impossible to make big plays in the zone, it's just not as likely. But here, second and seven, great example. Win at the line in man coverage, easy touchdown, like taking candy from a baby. We're struggling to get into the end zone and keep up with this Giants offense, but I'm having my best game thus far of the season. And the way I embarrass this safety, oh my goodness. But even though this game is already in the books, I continue to put my best foot forward, picking up my second touchdown of the day to slightly cushion the blow it has lost on the road. My best game so far this season, over 300 yards receiving, and it's crazy. I continue to up my play week by week, but we continue to fall short time and time again. With Davis throwing an uncanny amount of interceptions and our defense not being able to stop a group of toddlers if need be, I don't know who's holding us back the most, but during this back half of the season, we got to figure it out. Somebody let me know, is there a better way to start a game than winning at the line, burning your mans, and getting upfield, making the catch, walking into the end zone celebration style? 
we've officially reached the halfway point through this season and it's almost guaranteed that we won't make it into the playoffs which was kind of expected going into this season and it's another week another game another opportunity for davis mills to overthrow me putting the ball right in the hands of the defender that i just burned and as much as I talk bad on my quarterback, bro, our defense can't hold water. 33 points before the fourth quarter is outrageous. It's absurd. And as much as I dislike David Mills, even just a little bit of hate as a player and as a quarterback, he does have flashes of just greatness in him sometimes. And I use that word greatness very, very, very lightly. One minute he's throwing dots, the next he's throwing picks. He's just a model for inconsistency. And it seems as though this cornerback was tasked with following me around the entire field and he's getting beat every time. But nothing is getting beat worse than our cheeks right now. 47 to 10 is outrageous. And per usual, even with these beautiful red unis on, I'm taking a walk of shame, a walk of anger back to the locker room, man. We got to do better. Down here in MIA, Miami, and boy, last night, I ain't gonna lie, we had a good time, a great time, actually. And I can honestly say, I kind of see why Miami really hasn't been great as they could be for a long time because this city, it, it'll drag you down and it'll drain you. But no matter what type of night I had, I'm always ball at the highest level. Sell this route inside, get it back out, torch this DB completely. Davis put this ball in the bucket. We pick up a touchdown. We're down two possessions midway through the third quarter and we need a few plays to march our way down the field and get into the end zone. So I pick up the first down. If this was an Aaron Rodgers or a Josh Allen, somebody with crazy arm strength who could lead this just a little bit more, just a few more yards, this probably would have been a touchdown, but it's a big play. Very often, when I'm hot and I set us up with a bunch of big plays to get us in the red zone or within five yards of the end zone, I usually get taken out. But with us being in desperate need of a touchdown, instead of running the ball, they keep me on the field, and of course I'm open for the touchdown. Let's get it. A three-point loss to a very talented Miami team. I'm surprised our defense held them to only 24 points with that explosive offense, so it's a good sign, I guess. We got press man coverage at the line. No jam, so I guess he's respecting my speed, but what he need to respect is my hands. I go up top, come down with this when I get into the end zone for the early touchdown. On this play, I wanted to experiment a little bit, add a little more depth and extend my route on this play, and it works out perfectly, but this safety lit me up before I could even touch the end zone. These out routes or routes that go towards the sideline in general are my guilty pleasure. Anytime I get the toe tap and showcase that beautiful ability, I love it. And I guess the coaches done learned their lesson. Keep De Leon on the field at all times, especially in short distance situations. I'm going to eat and secure the bag every time. I know I often make comparisons from college to the league, but I can't help it, especially when it comes to making plays after the catch. It's a lot harder because these guys, they swarm you after that ball gets to your hands. And right here, it's a great example. I make this catch across the middle of the field. It's wide open. No one's there. And before I could even look up and get to the first down marker, I'm swarmed by four white jerseys. If I had to choose between two dubs on the road or one at home, I'll take the one at home any day. Giving our fans a win at the crib, there's nothing that compares to that feeling. Because that usual walk of shame to the tunnel turns into a trot of triumph and happiness. Allowing my teammate to make it upfield before I did was the best thing I could have done on this route. He distracted this safety. Of course, I burnt the corner and we start this game against Dallas the right way. No matter how well I run my route, the concept, coverage, it does not matter. When we're this close to the end zone, I can never get in. I get tackled just short every time. Dallas not having Trevon Diggs lined up in front of me every snap, I feel like it's a slap in the face. A huge sign of disrespect. Why isn't your number one corner guarding the best young receiver in the league? Not gonna lie, this corner did an amazing job not biting on this route. I turn it up field though and I do the unexpected. I go up top on his head, come down for the touchdown. I think everybody expects me to shred just about any defense at this point, even as a rookie. But if you would have told anyone that we would be up on Dallas in the third quarter, no one would believe that. But believe it or not, the one person that I give all the credit to for us having the lead right now isn't even on this team. It's not myself, my quarterback, my offense, my defense. It's Dak Prescott, a.k.a. Mr. Inconsistent. Me plus Trevon Diggs in the red zone with press man coverage is popcorn with extra butter worthy. But I'm going to get the win at the line and I'm going to secure the touchdown. And the dominance just doesn't stop. They continue to press me at the line, which I absolutely love because I harp on that fact 24-7. But we get another touchdown. We put this one away late in the third quarter. We literally owned the first three quarters. But that fourth quarter, Dallas started to take off and ball out of control. But they ran out of time before they could pull off the crazy comeback. Can we secure an unexpected dub against another great top-tier playoff caliber team? Bro, what did I say about the middle of the field? Run a great route, get in the open space. Looks like I got one man to shake. Next thing you know, there's 50 white jerseys piling on the little blue rabbit. 
I don't know what it is, but I've been going up top, snagging on these DBs' heads, bro. They respect my speed so much, so now I got to get a little more aggressive and start high-pointing that ball, letting them know I'm like that. And earlier this week, one of my teammates gave me an interesting nickname, the Red Zone Warrior. When I'm down here in this short distance with my speed, I'm like the Flash. Ask me, ain't no player receiver in this league in general who can track the ball better than me. Davis launches this ball deep upfield and puts it in the perfect spot right on my outside shoulder. I got to give him major credit for this one. After a huge play and a great throw, Davis Mills will be Davis Mills. Just before I could get the outside leverage and get the advantage over this linebacker in coverage, he throws the most oblivious pick that I've ever seen. And before we could even make it out of the third quarter, this game went from being close to an absolute blowout. But just because my team is falling apart, I'm just going to continue to cut up this defense. It would have been nice to have back-to-back -back wins against two playoff-written teams, but I would have been delusional if I told you I thought that our defense can hold Kansas City to under 25 points. We all know the saying, more money, more problems. And before my first check from the league could even touch my account, I had hands from everybody in my face. Family, friends, outsiders, you name it. And I'm not a huge materialistic guy, so aside from me saving money and taking care of my responsibilities, I really have nowhere else to use all of this crazy money that I've just come into, so I look out for others. And I love it. I get a kick of joy being the breadwinner of my family, just helping out, doing everything I can to make sure everybody's good, even for outsiders. If I feel like you'll do right by the money, I'll have no problem writing a check or handing out cash. But when you do good things in life and you're trying to do the right things in the eyes of God, you got to watch out for vultures, people who can take advantage of you or overall just won't appreciate everything you're doing or even envy it. And then you got those who are just completely ungrateful, unappreciative for what you do because they want everything to themselves. It's almost like they want you to take care of them and not nobody else. And no one specific, but I'm kind of dealing with that with a few people now within my family. They feel like all of my focus need to be devoted to strictly the family. But how I see it, what about the kids or those who are just less fortunate outside of this family? Building boys and girls clubs for the kids, helping out single mothers out there in need. What about them? The last few games of the season, we got Jacksonville here at the crib and the head tap marathon continues as I open up this game with a nasty one. Even though this is my rookie season and I'm still in a rookie deal, I feel like with how well I've played, I've been able to kind of squeeze out a little bit of leverage for myself to either work my way out or either deeper into the situation. I'm going to give some clarity on that statement. It's very simple. Either Davis Mills gets out, you improve the offensive line and we get a new running back, or I'm out of here and I'm going somewhere else where they will actually build a team around me to succeed. Now, in a way, it sounds very inconsiderate or even selfish, but there's no way we should be playing at such a poor level when you got a guy like myself putting up crazy numbers on a week to week basis. Now, in no way am I saying one man makes a team, but when you got a guy balling at my level, you want to put pieces around me to compliment me, take some of the pressure off me so I can ball at an even higher level. Our offensive line is terrible, our run game is non-existent, and our quarterback is the most airheaded, oblivious thrower of the football that I've ever seen ever in my life on either level. And I feel like a guy like Brandon Cooks is a great number two receiver to me. He's a great deep threat, and we just complement each other's games so well. It goes hand in hand. And then you add on the fact that second to last game of the season, we get blown out. Blown out at home. Blown out at home against the Jacksonville Jaguars, who really aren't that much better than us. Just pathetic. The final game of my rookie season, it could very much be my final game as a Houston Texan. Before I attempt to make my exit and basically demand a release from the team, I'm going to see what direction they want to go in. If they want to build and go further and get rid of all of the excess weight, which is the bad players, cool. But if they want to continue the path of this slow, ineffective rebuild, I won't sit for it. I'm not going to waste years of my prime, my young prime, to just be wasted. But to just kind of put it in perspective, what team would I go to? What team would I sign with? What teams would be knocking at my door trying to pick me up, offer me the best deal, and allow me to come in day one as the guy? A comparable quarterback who won't throw a bunch of picks? Cool, the offensive line to protect said quarterback, nice, and the defense that could hold water would be much, much appreciated. The Chiefs, they're Super Bowl ready just about every season. Dallas, I could turn CeeDee Lamb into my number two receiver, and could you imagine me, T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, and Tyler Boyd all on the same team with Joe Burrow? So many possibilities, so many places for me to land, so many things that could happen. Just my addition could turn any decent team into a Super Bowl competitor. And with yet another bonehead pick from Mr. Davis, trash can, garbage juice mills, our season is over and we end on the worst note possible with two back-to-back -back L's. Here at the end of my rookie season, I finished third in the MVP race as a receiver. And has a receiver ever even won the MVP? And to no one's surprise, that Offensive Player of the Year award is mine. And I kind of had this one locked up since midway through the season, week eight, week nine. And once again, to no surprise, Offensive Rookie of the Year, I need that one as well. But shout out to that boy Traylon Burks over there down in Tennessee. He's going to be great for a long time. 
And if you ask any player or sports analyst past or present, they'll tell you straight up, I had the single-handedly most impressive season for a player in general ever in the history of the league. I finally made my decision. I will be demanding a release from the team, but the question is, when I am released, or if I am released, I don't care if I gotta sit out a year or two, when that time comes, what team should I sign with? After putting up otherworldly numbers playing for the Houston Texans my rookie season, I begged the organization to release me, and they finally did it, and now I can sign with any team in the league. I have offers on the table from over half the organizations in the league, but not only am I going to secure my bag, I'm going to sign with a team that's going to shock, surprise, completely discombobulate the entire NFL. I am officially one of the highest paid players in the league for the most underrated up-and-coming team in the entire NFL, the Detroit Lions. But before game one, we're already off to a crazy start. Zachary Mobley, who to my knowledge wasn't in competition to be the starting quarterback, and he's now my QB1 over Jared Goff. Keep in mind, Zach is a rookie, being thrown into the fire day one. But when you got weapons like myself, Amon Ross St. Brown, and Jamison Williams at your disposal, it really don't get no better than that. And then on top of that, you cannot forget, we got D. Swift in the backfield and some Isaiah P. Ryan backing him up. Bro, offensively, weapon-wise, we're loaded. With me and Zach both getting ready for our debut as Lions against the Pittsburgh Steelers, we've been trying to build as much chemistry as possible, and so far, he's looking pretty solid. And when I tell you, bro, this dude has a cannon for, bro, Zach has a bazooka for an arm delivering 50 plus yard bombs like it's nothing with pure accuracy. And I had to let the rookie know I can be a little unorthodox, maybe even off cue, if you will, at times, but I will never do anything that will promote a mistake on his end. To say the absolute least, I'm extremely excited for the season. But with all this hype and these expectations, we have to show up, produce, and perform. And if we don't, we could be the laughing stock of the league. We start the season off at home against the Steelers, trying to get off to the best start possible. There's no way we lose week one at the crib. But we're struggling the first half. We're down 17 to nothing late in the second quarter. And for some odd reason, I'm struggling to get the juices flowing. I'm making a few plays here and there, but not what I need for this team right now. But to me, it's very obvious what the problem is. We have so many playmakers on the field. We're going for the home run play just about every time. We need to slowly but surely chew up the field. But it's only the first half. I believe we go into the locker room. We sit down. We run through the game plan one more time. We get everything locked in and locked down, make the adjustments that we need. We'll be fine. We're not fine. Just over two minutes left in the third quarter, and this game getting out of hand is an understatement. We're getting absolutely destroyed right now. And to make matters even worse, my quarterback is out here seeing goals. He has two receivers pretty much wide open on the same side of the field, and he throws a pick to who we thought was Casper the Friendly Ghost. If you thought just for a second that I went touch the end zone in my debut for my new team, you're crazy. I catch a bomb, even though we're getting blown out, in the back of the end zone for our first touchdown of the game. The problem in the first half wasn't going for the big play continuously like I thought. It was because those plays weren't designed for me, but now that they are, I'm making big catch after big catch, chewing up the field. Coming into the season, people believed Amon Ra was the best route runner in this team, but I could sell a fish water with how well I sold this route inside, picking up this touchdown, giving us our second of the game late in the fourth quarter. We took a bad loss, a very bad loss, and even though Zach threw for nearly 400 yards through the air, bro, four interceptions, if he doesn't clean that up soon, we're in for a terrible season. We're looking to bounce back this week against Green Bay on the road, wearing these beautiful throwback unis. In my humble opinion, these might be a little bit better than our current away option. Throughout this entire week, I've been excited, overly excited, for the matchup against star cornerback Jair Alexander. But the game plan the coaches drew up was for me to avoid him at all costs, if that's even possible. But on a serious note, ladies and gentlemen, let's say a prayer for number 21. He's completely lost on this route as I pick up the first touchdown of the game. Oh my gosh. With how well the protection is up front for our rookie quarterback, Zachary Mobley, there's zero reason why he should be throwing terrible picks like this. That little interception problem he has is starting to become a big one. And to think, I dreamed of a matchup against Jair all week, and when that dream finally comes true for the first and only time this game, an overthrown ball will determine that matchup. We're down two scores halfway through the fourth, and even though we've been making a lot of mistakes leading up to this period of time, I will not allow us to go quietly. I pick up another touchdown, making this a one-score game. A 10-point loss, and we just didn't have what it took to overcome Green Bay on the road. Even though it's early in the season, I'm starting to get a little bit worried. That's two consecutive L's. It's week three, and I'm on a mission to help us secure our first win of the season. 
Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe I create enough separation with my routes for any quarterback in the NFL to put this ball on the money. But the only person that Zach continues to throw the ball to is these DBs on the other team. Here on third and nine, I got absolutely jammed up, but I end up putting old boy on skates and Zach put this ball perfectly over my shoulder in a bucket. Before the season started, we were projected to be one of the most explosive, if not the most explosive offense in the league. And throughout an entire quarter, we can't even put up three points. It's okay to have a slow start to a game here and there, every couple of games, every now and again, but three straight games where we struggle to put points up early is absolutely unacceptable. And we really can't shift any blame on the defense. We're on the road at Carolina against a decent Carolina team, and so far they've only put up 17 points. And for the first time throughout this entire game, we're actually in the red zone looking to get into the end zone because going scoreless is just, no, it's just not going to happen. Although we make our way into the end zone for the first time late in the fourth quarter, it won't be enough. We lose our third consecutive game. At this point, we're just serial losers. With our season getting off to a terrible start, our head coach hit me up and I told him straight up, the quarterback play is the reason why we aren't having the success that we should. So they called him up to the office and basically let him know he needs to turn it up a notch. So right now, not only is it pressure on us as a team to get our first win, but it's more pressure on Zach Mobley than ever. And for the first time in what feels like ever, we actually put up a touchdown in the first quarter. Now it's up to us to keep the momentum rolling. And as long as Zach is throwing those balls accurately, I'm going to catch them all. I believe my ability to create separation within my routes is amongst some of the best in the league, probably ever. I completely distribulate this DB after planting my foot into the ground, and Zach delivers a perfect deep ball. And did I forget to mention that we single-handedly have one of, if not the best black uniform combo of all time. Imagine if we had black helmets, if not black pants to go with this. My gosh! Yes, sir. The Julian and Zach duo continues to dominate. I don't know what it is about the way he places his balls perfectly over my shoulders. It's just perfect every time. And real quick, can somebody do me a favor? Because I don't want to do it. Tell this DB he's an absolute fool for not trying to slow me down, put hands on me or anything at the line. I'm wide open. I go and touch to further our lead. And finally, we secure our first win of the season. And I'm going to be honest, calling out Zach was the best thing we could have possibly done. Four touchdowns, no interceptions on the day. And I personally have my best game of the season, 217 yards receiving, three touchdowns. I went crazy, balled out. Shout out to my QB for stepping his game up. Thank you. Now, for most NFL fans, GB stands for Green Bay. But for us, it means get back. And that's exactly how we open up this game with a big play to start this one off. And like I said, this is a get back game. I'm taking this one very personal. And we draw first blood as I get into the end zone for the first touchdown of the game. I guess Buddy ain't get the memo. Somebody should have let this safety know when you see me coming, you better get out of that back pedal a little bit early because I have real wheels and my quarterback has an arm like no other. Lately, I've been somewhat fearful calling for passes across the middle of the field because Zach throws so many picks that way, but today, he putting them balls exactly where they need to be. We've been flying over the top lately, tearing defenses apart. I count four guys on this play dropping back deep, which leaves the middle of the field wide open, and we can just expose it. Round of applause for my offensive line. Round of applause for my big boys up front. They allow Zach to hang tight in the pocket and deliver a perfect ball picking up the touchdown. We did our thing today. We secure a win over a team that embarrassed us just a few weeks ago, and I think now we're starting to unlock our true potential. We've got Chicago, Chicago this week on the road. I'm not sure how noticeable or unnoticeable it is, but I've added on five pounds of muscle since last season because these safeties in the league, oh, they hitting, hitting. First and 10, we're backed up on our own one yard line, and this is just completely unnecessary. But on the first play of the drive, we throw a deep bomb. I catch it on two DBs, and now we're at the 50 yard line. I'm mostly known for my speed, but now I'm going up top, catching passes on DB's head, tossing guys, diving into the end zone. What am I on right now? Just under 10 seconds left before we walk into the tunnel for the half, but today I'm putting my full skill set on display. I'm snapping ankles, catching head tops, doing it all today, just going crazy. The media is always talking about how much help Justin Fields needs on the offensive side of the ball, but where the ankle truck at? Because the ankle bully is out here on full display going crazy today. We have a comfortable lead here in the fourth quarter, and at this point, I'm just doing what I please. I run a custom route, and Zach is so used to me being off script, he still places a perfect ball, but somehow this wasn't a touchdown. At this point, it's just starting to become routine that we kick the game off on the first offensive possession with a huge play to kick the game off. It's getting nasty. 
as much as I try to solely focus on my career, my play on the field and just my craft in general, moving to a whole different state is a huge deal. As a professional athlete, I don't think it goes talked about enough when you have to move from state to state and all of the adjustment periods, the learning, the picking up you have to do so quickly on a season to season basis. And of course, this doesn't apply to every player every season, but for me to be a young guy still in this league and traveling to a whole different area code with my entire family, yeah, it can be tough. Yeah, you heard me right. My entire family. Well, my immediate family. Mom, dad, aunties, a few uncles, some siblings, my grandma, you know, nothing crazy, but it is a nice chunk of us. I take care of all of us because when you're in this position making millions of dollars every single year, I feel somewhat obligated to look after my people and they make the adjustment period that much easier. And there's nothing like having a supporting cast who's going to be there and back you up 24 seven, no matter what you do or where you go. I love it. It's crazy to think we started this season off on a three game losing streak to winning our last four games straight. And it could be five if we win this game against Las Vegas. And wait, can we take a second to acknowledge my quarterback, my quarterback's ability to place a perfect ball? Come on now. And then my toe tapping ability is bar none. I said it, I said it, I said it. I told you eventually I will become a head tap machine. And usually I just put my hands out. But now I'm high pointing that thing. Being down 24 to 7 in the third quarter to a Las Vegas Raiders team who I would consider mediocre is outlandish. It's the fourth quarter and we only have seven points. Nah, hold my Gatorade cup. Zach put this ball exactly where it needed to be because he knows if we need a touchdown, I'm the go to guy. It's third and eight under a minute left. Zach drops back deep in the pocket, delivers a perfect ball, and I pick up the touchdown to put us within three of at least sending this game into overtime. We do take this L against the Raiders on the road, but winning four of our last five games, we're definitely excited for the back half of the season. But if we want to get into the playoffs to dominate, we got to turn things up a notch. This is the most important period of time for our team, this back half of the season. We got to continue to dominate so we can meet expectations. We started out this season very rocky, but once we let our rookie quarterback know that his bad play was detrimental to our success, he stepped his game up and we've been balling ever since. And granted, yeah, it's still early in the season, but right now our main focus as a team is consistency. And I mean that in terms of how we practice, how we overall prepare. If we can do all of those things down to a T and be consistent with that, come game day, we'll produce at the highest level. And after taking a look at our schedule to finish off this season, a lot of great secondaries, a few good defensive fronts, and just overall some really good teams we got to be prepared for. And with all the chemistry that me and Zach Mobley have at this point, bro, I'm looking to have a better season than my rookie year. And I broke just about every receiving record that you can think of. But to switch lanes for a second, we had a 10 point lead early in the fourth quarter and somehow we managed to find ourselves here in overtime with a tie game. But when we need a big play the most, I deliver. After executing the biggest play of the game, I watched my boy DeAndre Swift walk it in for the game winning touchdown here in overtime. And post game, of course, I'm celebrating with my quarterback. Arrowhead Stadium, home of the defending Super Bowl champions, the Kansas City Chiefs. We got these boys on the road this week. We kicked this one off early in the first quarter with some great field positioning. And of course, there's no DB on this team or in the league that can keep up with my route running. I pick up TD number one. Here early in the second quarter, Zach is going to throw up a complete prayer. But anytime Zach puts any one of his balls in the air, best believe I'm going to be the one to come down with it. Ain't nobody catching his balls but me. When I see a corner playing off-man coverage with no safety help over the top, I see food, and I'm going to gobble him up, picking up my second touchdown in just the first half. As of lately, I've been giving Zach a lot of praise, but rightfully so. His ball placement skills is actually really good, a lot better than what I thought they were to start the season. He just needs to work on that accuracy just a little bit. Down one score, under two minutes left in the fourth quarter, it's crunch time, and when we need a big play, they know who the ball is going to. There's no question, no ifs, no ands about it. But in Patrick Mahomes fashion, they go down with little time left on the clock and score yet again. And they ultimately send us back to Detroit with an L. After the loss in Kansas City, Coach Dre hit me up and he asked me, should we prioritize preparation or rest? And I told him straight up, all gas, no break. We got to put the work in. We may not be rested, but we're extremely prepared. And anytime we can be at home playing against this packed out stadium, bro, we're going to ball at the highest level every time. And that was my mindset and my way of thinking in that moment when I made the decision to prioritize work over rest. I knew with the game at home, a chance to play in front of our mothers, fathers, our children, just our families in general, we wouldn't let a little fatigue keep us from balling out. And once again, in a situation like this, I'm completely right. And we're frying the bears, beating their cheeks like they stole something. 
even with great speed, change of direction, acceleration, and just overall how great of a player I am, I have yet to complete a successful dive towards the end zone within the five yard line. It's pathetic. To be completely honest, nobody thought the Bears stood a chance against us, and there's no better way to bounce back from an L on the road than a blowout win at home. Anytime I get an opportunity to outshine a top end receiver in their house, or oh, I'm gonna show out and go crazy. I'm only about a year into my NFL career, but do most people consider me a top end receiver amongst the Justin Jeffersons, the Stephon Diggs, the Devontae Adams, guys like that? Am I of that caliber yet? Because if we take a look at the numbers and we base this solely off the numbers, not only am I amongst the top of the league, I am at the top, on the throne, alone, because nobody else in the league can compare. And if we're keeping it a buck, taking everything into account, at this rate, I'm on pace to having one of, if not the most legendary career for a wide receiver in the league ever. Even if you go back to my college days, look at the film, the numbers I put up. I may have played at three different universities, but I broke records everywhere I went, and I've left imprints everywhere I've been that can't be smeared or erased. And now that I've made it to the league, I'm a star in the league. I'm a star in the league on a team that's up and coming, that's loaded with talent from top to bottom. I don't see any of that changing. But one thing that seems to linger in my mind are injuries. Take a look at a guy like OBJ, had the best start to a career than any other receiver in history. But when one injury hit, others followed up and it completely hindered his career. The Saints, they ain't the best team in the league. They ain't the worst, but they have a lot of high expectations. It seems the only part of them to live up to it is the secondary. Kinda. And to my surprise and this entire stadium surprise, they leave us scoreless in the first quarter. But if you think we're finna go an entire half scoreless to this team, you're crazy. Sometimes I just sit back and admire how well our offensive line protects Zach. He can sit back in the pocket very patiently and deliver nothing but dots. The way he places those balls in those tight windows, man, it's beautiful. I've never played defense a day in my life, but I've always respected a guy like Tyron Matthew, undersized, just a dog. But here, I got a little boy him. Stiff arm him, put him on the ground, get into the end zone for a touchdown. When it comes to Offensive Player of the Year this season, if not myself, I'm voting for Zach. His ability to put the ball exactly where it needs to be, out of harm's way, but where I can catch it with no problem, it's amazing. And I know it seems like I've been on his meat a lot lately, and I have, but you gotta think about it like this. He's a rookie quarterback coming in blazing the lead like he has. Bro, you be glazing too. Some way, somehow, the Saints have had the lead throughout the entire game. It's been an upwards hill battle from the start, and it's looking like it's gonna be like that to the finish. They continue to make it harder and harder for us to come back in this game by going down, scoring another touchdown. And my response is getting a touchdown of my own, putting us again three points away from tying this game. No timeouts. This is the final play of the game. And we catch my boy Honey Badger back here lacking. I flip into the end zone and for the first time in this game, we take the lead and we take it when it matters. With the way things played out throughout this entire game, we showed some real resilience. And if you thought I was going to lose a game at home in front of my mama and my grandma, Stop it. See, to the average person or just anybody else on the outside looking in, this looks like a completely covered route. I'm just surrounded by Falcons defenders, but in all reality, only I could catch this ball. Perfect ball placement. And just when everybody thought we would go scoreless in the first quarter, I completely shut that down, picking up our first touchdown here late in the first quarter. From the jump, this DB won this route, but the second he decided to get physical, I knew I had him. And so did Zach. He put this ball in the back of the end zone. I go up and high point it on his head. Third and 19 just before the half, this would have been the best play before a half ever in the history of the league if I somehow managed to break this one away. This big play really went in vain for nothing. The Falcons continue to make the same mistake time and time again, allowing us to have this great field positioning. If they continue to do so, we're going to cash in every time. At this point, my question is, is he even human? How do you deliver a 70 or 80 yard bomb on the money in stride like this? It's crazy. And then I fall one yard short of the touchdown. Me and Zach both bought out of control today. And out of his 296 yard passing, I had 225 of them. And I think it's safe to say we're the best young duo since rookie Dak and Ezekiel Elliott. We're back home in Detroit in these beautiful black unis against one of the, well, supposed to be best, in my opinion, overhyped secondaries in the league. Now, don't get me wrong. That boy Derwin James, he be doing this thing, balling out of control. He be hitting, going crazy. But J.C. Jackson, they paid him a bag just to get fried by receivers like myself. And throughout the season, that's been my hidden obsession, exposing all of the best corners and just DBs in general throughout the league. I really wish I could have got a piece of Jalen Ramsey this season. Someone let me know, is this my fault or is this one on Zach? I ran somewhat of a curl route, sat down in the end zone, and the ball just seemed like it took forever to get to me, and the DB got a free pick. 
Having late hands is essential to making a catch against great coverage. I don't react to this ball until it's damn near my face. That way the DB doesn't know when to react and it makes for an easy catch. We got fourth quarter action and so far our run game has been non-existent. They know the pass is coming, but even though they know it's coming and they're prepared for it, they still can't stop it. We're here in overtime and it's this press man coverage I see, you better off putting a toddler out there. I went at the line and at that point the wheels just take over. I make the catch, dive into the end zone to secure our fifth straight win. We've completely dominated this back half of our schedule, but with two more games left in the regular season before we head into the playoffs, we gotta lock in because we all know that playoff football is a completely different beast. My final two games, my second year in the NFL, my first season here as a Detroit Lion, we're currently on the winning streak, looking to win out going into the playoffs. These first two seasons of my NFL career has been exciting, eventful to say the absolute least, but the heat is on now. We're right at the door of the playoffs. We came into this season being regarded as one of the hottest teams in the league, and for us to start 0-3, but then to get things on track and start balling out of control, we're the number one offense in the NFL. My rookie quarterback, Zach Mobley, balling out of control. I'm playing some of the best football I've ever played in my entire life, and our defense has actually stepped up against top-tier competition. And our game plan going into these last few games of the season and heading into the playoffs is to knock the top off of every defense we come up against. And when Coach said that in the meeting, I'm not going to lie, I got a little overly excited. You got guys like myself and J-Mo who can take the top off of any defense in the NFL. And then you got a guy in the mile, Ross St. Brown, who can go underneath, chew up the field, and pick up those easy first downs. Even though I'm looked at to only be a vertical or deep threat, don't forget I am the number one red zone receiver in the league, but not because of my size, because I'll find space where there is none and make the big play every time. I don't think nobody, not a soul on earth, thought I would take the leap into my second year that I did and all around complete receiver releases, route running, catching hands, high pointing the ball, you name it, I'm just doing it all at the highest level. But all there's left to do to finish this season is to secure that number one seed in the NFC spot. We can get that bye week, more rest, more preparation, and we need that because we're a very young team. Well, I'll say we need the preparation more than anything. A majority of our offensive guys are under the age of 25, so we have no experience when it comes to games of that caliber. So we need to be on point executing at the highest level. Oh, but trust me, there's not a doubt in my mind that we can compete and dominate against any team in the league to date. And a blowout win against the Vikings at home? That ain't gonna do nothing but heighten my confidence in us. We're gonna finish the regular season off with two back-to-back -back home games, potentially two back-to-back -back home game wins. And if we do that, that'll be great momentum going into the postseason. If I bet you a million dollars to name a duo better than me and Zach with my elite route running and his pristine ability to place the ball, you couldn't name one. I promise you. I have nothing but the utmost respect for Devontae Adams, but when it comes to these releases at the line, I might just be the best in the league. I gobble up every corner who tries to press me at the line, and it goes the same way every time. 80 yards, an 80 yard touchdown, all because this corner made the dumb mistake of pressing me at the line yet again, and we all know, no safety, no matter what angle they have, is gonna catch me when I get into a full sprint. This corner just won't learn. He's supposed to have help over the top, but the safety actually drops down, and going into halftime, we were down seven, but we would quickly turn this one into a tie game. This is hands down my favorite matchup of the season. I love the confidence of this corner. He's trying to get physical with me. And back in college, that would have worked. They used to get the best of me all the time. But I'm a grown man in the league today. So don't play with me. Is it a little bit of magic? Houdini? I don't know what's going on. But I go up to high point this ball to get the head top of the century. And somehow, the ball lands in Jamison Williams' hands. What the f I'm having the time of my life. Then I owe it all to you. Number three of the commanders. As I go up in the head top, that boy was out of position. Let me get that. And after setting up the big play, putting us in the red zone, old boy ain't even attempt to jam me at the line. And of course, the greatest red zone threat of all time is going to secure the touchdown to take the game. A stellar performance, if I do say so myself, from Mr. DeLeon, which is me. Ten receptions, over 300 yards, three touchdowns on the day I balled out of my mind. Finish the regular season with the number one record in the entire NFL. But taking a look at our offensive numbers through the air, we're the number one in the league, no question, undisputed. But on the ground, we're pretty much pitiful. As we had hoped, we secure that number one seed, which lands us that first round bye. So whoever we play in the divisional, they're going to get a well-rested, extremely prepared Lions team. The fifth seed, New Orleans Saints, would secure the win over fourth seed, Tampa Bay Bucks. And if I remember back to earlier this season, that New Orleans secondary ain't no joke. So we got to come to ball, and I got to play at my best. 
to kick off the divisional round, the Saints are going to flat out disrespect me by not lining me up with their number one corner. And of course, I'm going to punish them for that. My advice to them, don't make the same mistake twice or three times. The first two quarters have been really uneventful, but we are marching our way down the field with 40 seconds left on the clock, trying to go into the second half with the most momentum possible. If Lattimore is going to hide on the other side of the field from what's supposed to be an elite popcorn worthy matchup, I'm going to come to his side, embarrass him and his teammates and take a 14 point lead. But when it's all said and done, our defense might be the MVP of the show. Now, New Orleans doesn't have the most high powered offense in the league, but they got some dogs over there. You can't sleep on that fact. Lattimore, you keep hiding and I'm going to keep coming to your side. I run my route directly towards him, make a toe tapping catch before falling out of bounds for another touchdown. I guess the Saints got a better head on their shoulders than the Commanders. After they failed to press me at the line and I punished them for it, they ain't pressing me no more. But when you give somebody like me space with my speed, I'ma embarrass you either way. No jam at the line in short distance is crazy. There's not a corner, not a safety in sight they can keep up with me. I pick up another touchdown, my fourth of the day, and we send the Saints back to New Orleans. Being honest, this was somewhat of a get back game for me personally towards the Saints secondary. They gave me a hard time when we played them earlier this season, so today I had a statement to make, and it was made clear, I'm him. Even though the Browns secured the first round by, to my surprise, they take a loss to the Raiders in their divisional game, but we got the Cowboys this week in the NFC Championship game. Now, Zach has been tearing up the lead, so hopefully today he can continue to do what he's been doing the last six or seven weeks, but today we face a pretty decent defensive line and a solid secondary. Oh, but no matter who we playing, Zach gonna be Zach, and I'ma be me, throwing his balls up for just anyone to grab, but you know I'ma come down with it every time, even through traffic. Hey, but you know me, I'ma exploit every hole in the defense that I can find. I get skinny, hit that cut, get to the back of the end zone, toe tap for the draw first blood, let's go. Tie game late in the first quarter, and can you believe this linebacker tried to put hands on me? Uh, no sir, fat boy. And then the safety, too slow, even though he had all the depth in the world. Give me that, I almost took that to the crib. We're one of the most explosive offenses within the entire NFL, but so is Dallas. I think they rank number one within the entire league in terms of total offense. So we got to continuously score to apply the pressure. Let me show off some of this grown man strength. I make this catch deep down the middle of the field. This safety really could have took my head off. I put on the brakes, make him miss, and I'm tossing linebackers. I did not want to go down. I'm 5'11", not the tallest guy on the field, but this corner is a lot shorter than me. And then little man decided to press me and got embarrassed. To be honest, I really don't think he was supposed to even be out here. Throughout the entirety of the first half, the game has pretty much been tied or we kept the lead. Now midway through the third, Dallas has a commanding eight point lead and we really have to chew up the field so we can take it back because we cannot allow them to have this much momentum. Mm. I've been waiting all game to get some of him. Finally, Diggs is lined up right in front of me, and he plays great coverage. I cannot lie, but Zach's ability to place the ball in my late hands, no corner stands a chance. I get it. I understand 100%. When you have a game plan, you execute it to the fullest. No matter how things go, you stick to the plan. But why do they continuously ask little man to press me at the line, and then they help over the top is lackluster? I'm going to eat that up every time. We could take the field goal, but we will be down one point, so that isn't an option. The two-point conversion is the only way, and here through traffic, I dropped the easiest pass of my life. Am I showing some nerves? Am I getting shook by this defense? What's going on? I see one high safety, and when I see that, I see food. And when I'm attacking what I thought was a hole in their zone, I look to my right, and I see a navy blue jersey going stride for stride with me. And Diggs pulls off one of the nastiest over-the-shoulder picks I've ever seen. Dallas went down and got a field goal, which still leaves us opportunity to go down and score and win this game. And I'm sick right now because Zach led me to the sideline. I could have probably caught and ran with this one, but I had to make sure I got both feet in. No timeouts left. Clock is still running. Zach has a clean pocket. Once again, I attack what I believe is a hole in their coverage. Diggs ain't been perfect this entire game, but he comes up big when they need it the most. And he picks up his second interception of the game. And just like that, we fall just one game short of the Super Bowl. But the thing that actually hurts the most, I know it's my fault. I let my family, these fans, and most importantly, my teammates down in the biggest game of our season. Since the loss, I've been at home watching the play over and over time and time again, watching me be selfish and put my hand up because I felt like I was the only guy that could make that play. Not noticing, J-Mo was up the sideline wide open. But hindsight is 2020, I guess. But knowing that my hand and my ego in that moment killed the opportunity for us to go on to achieve something great is weighing on my heart heavy. But on the bright side, well, what should be considered the bright side, QB1 for the NFC team in the Pro Bowl is my rookie quarterback, Zach Mobley. And you know your boy Big DeLeon is wide receiver number one. 
two high-powered offenses loaded with weapons. The Cowboys and the Raiders will go head-to-head -head in the Super Bowl. It's so bitter knowing that we should have been there. And there's no doubt in my mind, we would have smashed the Raiders. Trying to keep the streak alive for the years to come. My second year in the NFL, my second consecutive Pro Bowl. Man, it feels great. I'm not going to lie. No feeling can compare walking out of that tunnel. Maybe other than the Super Bowl. Now, this game is supposed to be for the fans. We got our families around. It's supposed to be a good time. All fun and games. Celebrate the greatness we've achieved throughout the season. But all this talent on the field, I'm trying to ball out. Now, this is supposed to be best of the best in the league right now, but no matter what, no matter who, you step up on that line and try to press me. I'm embarrassing you off the rip. Touchdown. We tied the game midway through the second quarter, and I'm still trying to find an enemy to forgive myself. I mean, Zach did throw the ball, but every time I throw my hand up, he put his trust in me. He knows that I'm going to come down with that ball by any means, but it just didn't turn out that way. But by the way it's looking, if we don't tighten up soon, it's looking like we're going to lose the championship game and the Pro Bowl. I can't go out on my season with two L's. Nah. I would be honored to play with any quarterback that was able to make it here in the Pro Bowl, but to have my quarterback here, oh yeah, any of these DBs that didn't get a taste of us during the season, they getting the whole load here in the Pro Bowl. I just said I didn't want to go out on the L, and that's exactly what we're about to do. Under five seconds left, down 10 points. I secure a nice toe-tapping touchdown, but obviously it's not enough to get the dub. I know it's just the Pro Bowl, but to finish off such a legendary season on two back-to-back -back L's, overall, is just lame. And of course, after putting up legendary numbers, your 2023 NFL MVP goes to me, your boy, Julian DeLeon. Oh, and that Raiders-Cowboys matchup was a straight-up shootout. It came down to the wire, but the Raiders pulled it out. We didn't get to compete in it, but I'm kind of glad the Cowboys lost. Overall, our season was great. As a team and me as an individual, I went crazy. But going into my third year in the league, my second year as a Lion, I won a Super Bowl, Super Bowl MVP, undefeated regular season, Offensive Player of the Year, everything, you name it, I won it all.